pleasant morning to everyone. Again, a pleasant morning to everyone. Our program will begin in two minutes, so we'd like to request everyone to settle down. And to those um, participants in person, may we ask you to move forward to fill in the chairs that are blank in front. So we enjoin everyone, if you see a vacant seat in front of you, to stand up and move forward, please. Once again, we enjoin the participants here in person. If you see a vacant seat in front of you, we kindly ask that you stand up and move forward so that we can make space to those who are joining us a little bit later. Thank you. Once again, a pleasant morning to everyone. We shall formally begin our program. We request everyone to please all rise for the Philippine National Anthem to be followed by the FEU Multi-Faith Prayer. Glory to you, Almighty, for gathering us today 
Give us the fortitude to conquer life's challenges. Inspire us to excel and to be upright in everything we do. Guide us to remain united in diversity, to serve and love one another. Amen. We may now be seated. A pleasant and wonderful Monday morning to everyone joining us here at the mini auditorium of the Far Eastern University, as well as those who are joining us via Facebook live stream. So this event is being streamed live in the pages of Far Eastern University, the National Council for Children's Television, the Philippine Association for Media and Information and Literacy, and Rappler. Welcome to the Global Media and Information Literacy Week, the Philippine Stakeholders Forum. I am Trixie, the manager of FEU Media and Information Literacy Advocacy, or MILA as we call it, honored to be your MC for today's program. The theme for the Global MIL Week 2022 is Nurturing Trust, a Media and Information Literacy Imperative, and this event focuses on the trust and solidarity as it relates to people, media, digital platforms, governments, private sector, and non-governmental organizations. So to formally welcome us, may I introduce the Dean of the Institute of Arts and Sciences of Far Eastern University, Dr. Rowena Capulong Reyes. I had to remove my mask. Hindi po bagay magkasama ang salamin at ang mask. Alright, good morning. Kamusta po kayong lahat? Magandang umaga sa atin. Sa ating mga kaibigan from UNESCO MIL Alliance, National Council for Children's Television. Nasaan po sila? There. Philippine Association for Media and Information Literacy. Move PH. Yes, thank you. Out of the box media literacy. Break the fake movement. Ganda ng pangalan, ha? Foundation for media alternatives. Rappler. Of course, the Department of Communication of Far Eastern University. Dear students, faculty, and the senior high school teachers of FEU High School, welcome to the MIL home. Yes, I want to say that. The Far Eastern University is very pleased to welcome you to the kickoff event for the Philippine celebration of the Global Media and Information Literacy Week. Since 2011, the United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organization, or UNESCO, has celebrated the Global MIL Week annually by stakeholders worldwide to review and celebrate the progress achieved towards the media and information literacy for all initiative. In the wake of community quarantine restrictions, Filipinos of every age went online. My, you know, my freshman students, uh, I met them online and they approached me just today and they look really different from online <laughs> to in person. Raise your hand, nasan sila? There. <laughs> so um, this resulted in what we call a digitalized way of life. Almost everything was done online. We shopped for food, check. For groceries, checked. We watched our favorite shows, check. And we became experts in changing our virtual backgrounds in online meetings. Agree? Yeah. Ang dami ko na pong virtual backgrounds. Meron na akong ilang folder for that. According to UNESCO, nearly 60% of the world's population is using the internet. With this year's theme of nurturing trust, a media and information literacy imperative, we are one of with the 85 other countries to celebrate the 2022 Global MIL Week. 
Today's forum focuses on trust and solidarity as it relates to people, media, digital platforms, governments, private sector, and non-governmental organizations. And we are pleased to have with us, both in person and online, representatives from those sectors. Hello, Joey. He's going to be online. FES Institute of Arts and Sciences, through the Department of Communication, headed by Herwin Cabasal, demonstrates the mantra, May Alam, May Paki Alam. As the co-organizer for today's Stakeholders Forum, and through the very own media and information literacy program, advocacy program called MILA, later on we'll present to you our very own MILA, we formalize our efforts of assessing competency gaps in teaching and learning, MIL, and what interventions, measures we can provide to act address those gaps. And I said earlier, FEU is offering as your home for your MIL advocacy. After all, we have Mila. We are grateful to our co-organizers and most especially to our resource speakers for today. From the International Steering Committee of UNESCO, MIL Alliance, Out of the Box Liter Media Literacy, Break the Fake Movement, Foundation for Media Alternatives, Rappler's Move PH, the Philippine Association for Media and Information Literacy, and the National Council for Children's Television and Meta. We look forward to our united efforts for a media and information literate Philippines. Kasama ko po, katuwang po ng inyong uh, movement, ay ang Philippine Association of Communication, edu uh, Communication Educators. Sa ngalan po ng aming presidente, si Mark Lester Chico, and of course, our ex-president, si, um, and she's going to be uh, speaking to you before uh, all of you later, um, Dr. Gwenesta Pusta and uh, Flor Delis Abanto, nasan po sila? There. Sa ngalan po ng PACE at ang aming presidente, kami po ay um, kasama nyo sa pagsa-celebrate ng Global MIL Week. Again, welcome to FEU and FEU is the MIL home. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dean Wen, and I hope our friends who are joining us online would feel the warm welcome to the FEU MIL home. To give his own opening remarks, we'd like to watch a recorded message on behalf of the International Steering Committee of the UNESCO MIL Alliance, we listen to Jose Ruben Alagaran II, PhD. Good day, everyone. As we celebrate the Global MIL Week, the Philippines takes pride in being one of the most active countries in promoting media and information literacy all over the world. We are also among the first to offer media and information literacy in the school curriculum, and the first in Southeast Asia to put up a national association on MIL. The MIL movement in the country has indeed come of age. After the rollout of the K-12 program, more educators have become interested in MIL, what it really is, why it is important, and how it can be taught. Then came the quote-unquote fake news phenomenon. Many Filipinos finally realized we needed media literacy. Fast forward, more organizations have become more involved, and we are all here now to work together, not only to celebrate the National MIL Month, but also the Global MIL Week. This year's theme on nurturing trust through media and information literacy as part of the UNESCO celebration is a relevant one amidst challenges on disinformation, hate speech, and lately, 
mistrust on democratic institutions, including news media. The absence of trust has created enormous disruptions that threaten politics, social relations, and public health. In a study conducted among news consumers in Australia, some factors that promoted trust and mistrust were identified. The factors that promoted mistrust in news included a past history of inaccurate stories, opinionated journalists or presenters, a lack of transparency, sensationalism, and excessive advocacy on behalf of particular points of view. On the other hand, the factors that promoted trust included depth of coverage, the reputation of the news brand, the reputation of particular journalists or presenters, and openness to comments and feedback from audiences. Restoring trust in news media through media and information literacy requires public education. We, as MIL organizations, must focus on consistent MIL advocacy, which includes disinformation resilience. Likewise, a critical media and information literacy framework must guide this initiative to allow individuals to know how to deconstruct media messages first to be followed by alternative production. It should not only focus on evaluating news, but also other forms of media text, as we have been exposed to um, a barrage of information that influence our media choices and promote trust or mistrust in news. The Philippine educational system must likewise study the possibility of integrating MIL across the curriculum, as MIL must not only be viewed as a standalone subject, but a concept that is intertwined in the study of history, language arts, social studies, science, values education, and even mathematics. Teaching truth across disciplines is always a goal of MIL. For imparting lessons through media texts is driven by truth. We need to take the lead as MIL advocates in propagating MIL integration as we will be continuously challenged by media and information in a media-saturated Filipino society. We have reached this far in our quest for truth. We will continue to promote news literacy as an important component of media and information literacy. Together, we need to create an MIL literate society that values freedom, democracy, and human rights through education, research, and advocacy for educators, the youth, media, public information officers, and even parents. As I end my term as Asia-Pacific Regional Representative to the International Steering Committee of the UNESCO MIL Alliance, I enjoin everyone to support and restore the truth in our democratic institutions. For as vanguards of truth would always say, truth will set you free. Thank you very much and good morning to everyone. Maraming maraming salamat ulit, Dean Reyes and Dr. Alagaran. Let's move forward for today's program. Does humility and militancy cancel each other out? Is it possible to remain humble and militant at the same time? The answer, 
lies in MIL. I quoted the words of our keynote speaker this morning, and let me introduce him to you. Marlon Julia Numbrado is a critical media literacy educator with seven years of teaching experience in both secondary and tertiary levels. He is one of the three co-founders of the Out of the Box Media Literacy Initiative, an educational nonprofit that won first prize in last year's Global and Media Information Literacy Awards of the UNESCO MIL Alliance. Marlon is also a part-time lecturer at the University of the Philippines, Baguio, where he teaches media studies. He is an alumnus of the International Visitor Leadership Program, or IVLP, the premier exchange program of the U.S. State Department for emerging foreign leaders. Marlon finished his bachelor's degree in journalism from UP Diliman and has finished the coursework in candidacy exam for his master's degree from the same school. Help me welcome to the floor Marlon Julian Numbrado for the keynote address MIL, a balancing act between humility and militancy. A round of applause, please. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Last night, I had a difficulty getting sleep. Perhaps I was so excited to see everyone here today. This is the first time that we are organizing, co-organizing an in-person event. I remember the last time we had something like this was 2019 for Digital Tayo Teachers Training. September yon, 2019. So it's been a long time seeing real faces, not inside boxes of Zoom and Google Meet and so on. So this feels special. Um, so first of all, I want to thank uh, Dean Wen, uh, Doc Joey um, of the UNESCO MIL Alliance and FEU, and of course our friends from uh, UNESCO Jakarta office for supporting this event that we are um, having this morning. And of course, all of the co-presenters of Hashtag Global MIL Week PH, and of course, everyone of you who made the effort to come here today um, in person, and everyone else who are watching and joining us virtually. So the title of my prepared um, something, my prepared speech for you is MIL, a balancing act between humility and militancy. Um, since I don't have a clicker, allow me to just every now and then say next slide. <laughs> <laughs> to um, guide our uh, tech team. So next slide. It's a rare thing to find these two words in the same sentence, humility and militancy. I am sure about this because I only arrived with this pair of words with the help of Google. <laughs> the Google search for words containing MIL. Next slide. My lack of linguistic creativity needed some help from Google. But trust me, the title of this presentation is beyond some corny wordplay. Humility and militancy, next slide, besides containing the letters MIL, are two values that I find intriguing. Next slide. While not necessarily opposites of each other, humility and militancy require different sets of skills and attitude to perform. A humble person is someone who is unassuming, takes their time before making a judgment, and is self-aware. A militant person, on the other hand, is someone who is combative, aggressive, and unwilling to compromise. So you might ask, do these two cancel each other out? Or is it possible to find both qualities of humility and militancy in one person? Next slide. The answer lies in MIL, or media and information literacy. A set of competencies that help people to maximize advantages and minimize harms brought by media content and technologies and other sources of information. Next slide. Moreover, MIL has been described as a human right and a public good, a global ideal that has been championed by UNESCO and its members and partners worldwide. And that's why we're here today, to celebrate the 11th Global Media and Information Literacy Week, first held by UNESCO in Fez, Morocco in 2011. Now, going back to my question earlier, next slide. How does being humble and being militant relate to or evoke media and information literacy? Next slide. Here's the simple answer. Next slide. 
humility is a prerequisite for MIL, while militancy is a consequence of MIL. I mean, that's one way to look at it. Next slide. To be able to analyze and evaluate the reliability of a piece of information, one has to be humble enough to recognize their own cognitive vulnerabilities, how one avoids being taken over by their misjudgments, biases, our negative emotions, is key in being media and information literate. Intellectual humility counters our tendency to think we know a lot when in fact we don't. Tamaan na yung mga dapat tamaan, no? And that's all of us. Next slide. On the other hand, I would claim that militancy can become a consequence of MIL. When a student of media comes to the realization that they must take action with and through media to reform social and civic structures around them. Next slide. This is what Paul Mihalidis points out in his value-driven approach to media literacies. All of you are probably familiar with this approach, right? MIL as a set of skills and competencies to access, analyze, evaluate, reflect, create, and act. Now, Paul Mihalidis said that we could refocus MIL from this to next slide, this. A set of, next slide, a set of value-driven constructs that support civic intentionality in media practice. Paul Mihalidis listed caring, persistence, imagination, emancipation, and critical consciousness. So we ask, why fact check? Why analyze advertisements? For whom do we create vlogs, podcasts, short films, hashtag campaigns? For what civic ends do we envision MIL for? This is militancy in MIL. Next slide. Now, these two attributes should not only manifest in the micro practices of media literate individuals, but more importantly, to the MIL movement as a whole. Next slide. We, as stakeholders of MIL, teachers, librarians, media producers, activists, governments, media companies, and platforms, we all must embrace humility. Because in order to move forward and innovate, we should admit that we can never do things alone. We need intersectoral cooperation. While we obviously have many differences, we also have shared interests, and that's what we should build on. Next slide. What we have in MIL is a moving target. As we become more and more dependent on media technologies, the media are becoming more complex and fast-changing. The digital anxieties of today might be very different from what we'll have in the next three, five, ten plus years. And so the MIL movement has to be militant too. Next slide. London School of Economics professor Sonia Livingstone, chair of the LSE Truth, Trust, and Technology Commission, described media literacy as everyone's favorite solution to the problems of regulation. What she meant by this is that we need to criticize how MIL, digital literacy, news literacy, however you want to call it, has been used as an excuse or a diversion from pursuing the much needed regulation of our digital media environment. In other words, while it's always welcome to have policymakers and media and tech companies champion or suggest MIL as the solution, we shouldn't let it deflect our attention from demanding reforms and accountability from the very structures that sustain this information, online hate, digital insecurity, and so on. Next slide. These two must go hand in hand. Mainstreaming MIL must be sustained alongside pushing for digital rights and data justice, ensuring freedom of speech and safety of journalists, and petitioning for greater transparency in digital media. Because as Livingstone pointed out, next slide, it's hard to teach the public MIL when we lack transparency in the media, when trust is declining, when our society is polarized. As with many things, the very reasons that inspired MIL to flourish for the past six, seven years are the same reasons that are making it tough for us to achieve our objectives. 
Next slide. Just take this bit for example. Considering the numerous MIL webinars, trainings, resources that we have launched over the past how many years, one might think that we might have already improved the MIL competencies of so many Filipinos, right? But then, we are faced with the lamentable truth that maybe we just ended up building an echo chamber. Next slide. Sure, an echo chamber of freedom-loving citizens, staunch defenders of truth, fact-checking savants, right? But still, an echo chamber. Next slide. A tribe that is insulated from opposing ideas, and in some instances, a tribe that might be too self-involved and unwelcoming. Well, this is obviously not what we want for the MIL movement in the Philippines. If we are to succeed against polarization and trust decline, the last thing we want for MIL stakeholders is to cordon off each other. We can't allow our differences and all the bureaucratic barriers, I know there are a lot, to prevent us from working together. Again, the challenge for us is to be humble and to be militant. This is a balancing act, a two-pronged approach that I am proposing, a commitment that we have to strive for, for a media and information literate Philippines. That's it for me. Thank you very much for your attention and good morning. Once again, we give a round of applause to Marlon. I hope that has tickled your interest of what exactly is a good balance between um, the militancy and the information literacy part. So now we move forward to our first panel session entitled Empowering Digital Filipinos building resilience against disinformation, online hate, and cyber harms. Let me introduce the facilitator for the session. Paolo Miguel Ordoño is the Secretary and Community Manager of the Break the Fake Movement, an independent group of young leaders from different professions and sectors committed to help fight disinformation and promote responsible digital citizenship. He started his advocacy in MIL when he worked with the National Council for Children's Television as project development officer and served as the focal person of the Media Literacy Orientation Services section. Here, he primarily manages to deliver inclusive MIL education programs to Filipino children parents, and guardians, as well as educators. Pao is also an active volunteer teacher in various organizations working with and for children. Kuya Pao, which his friends and colleagues are fond of calling him, is an alumnus of the Polytechnic University of the Philippines with a bachelor's degree in broadcast communication and currently taking up a Master of Science in Development Communication at the University of the Philippines, Los Banos. Everyone, help me welcome Paolo Miguel Ordoño. Hello po, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. So we are very much excited for this, like what Sir Marlon said, as we return to the face-to-face the -face forum. We want it to be more interactive, so I think we should get it started. Like what shared, um, the first session will be entitled Empowering Digital Filipinos, Building Resilience Against Disinformation, Online Hate, and Cyber Harms. This panel discussion, we invited two distinguished speakers to discuss more about it, and we will explore the connection between MIL, civic participation, and digital rights. They say that resilience is deeply rooted characteristic that makes up the Filipino identity, often cited in the context of Filipinos picking themselves up in the face of calamities. This notion has been challenged by some when it romanticizes people's sufferings and becomes an excuse for government negligence. In the case of the intersecting challenges we are facing in the digital space, we ask 
how can we boost Filipinos' media and information literacy, skill, literacy skills while at the same empowering them to demand solutions and accountability from the government, media platforms, and other power brokers? So let me introduce first our two speakers uh, before we continue to our discussion. First, we have Ms. Thina Lopez. Christina is the Program Officer for Gender and ICT. She is a registered social worker and has been in practice since 2006. She is committed to making social work known to those outside of the profession while fostering pride among those engaged in it. Her resume includes many years of experience working with women, children, migrants, and the elderly under the tutelage of community-based and non-government organizations. Her previous paid and volunteer work included positions in frontline programs, agency management, and social services governance. At FMA, or Foundation of Media Alternatives, she participates in many conferences and mentoring opportunities to further hone her craft while studying advances in gender studies and internet governance. And for our second speaker, we have Ms. Samantha Bagayas. She is the unit head of civic engagement for Rappler. Hailing from Cagayan de Oro City, she first entered Rappler as an intern under Move PH, its advocacy platform and civic engagement arm in 2017. She later became a community and civic engagement specialist under Rappler, working with movers and campus journalists across the Philippines to amplify issues affecting their communities. She graduated from Xavier University at Tineo de Cagayan with a degree in development communication and was the editor-in-chief of the Crusader, the university's official student publication. Palakpakan po natin ang ating dalawang babaeng kasama sa entabladong ito. Ayan. <laughs> so before we formal start to our panel discussion, Ms. Sam Bagayas prepared a presentation for us to prepare us to dig deeper on today's discussion. Ms. Sam, please take it away. Hi everyone, I'm Sam. Um, this is going to be a short talk um, given how I have a limited time, but I will talk about what individuals can do to fight this information. So this is something that MIL, this is one of the challenges of that MIL has to address. And it's also something that involves everybody, not just journalists or academics, but also individuals like you guys. So this, this isn't, um, it won't cover all grounds, but at least it's a starting point for you guys, um, especially if this is something that you might be interested in. So I can also share about how you can start your journey of being an active citizen. Ayun. So first off, where have you encountered a lie? Parang tayo lahat naman siguro, parang nakikita na tayo na yung mga relatives natin, yung mga friends natin, minsan nag-share sila ng mga stuff sa mga group chats natin, sa Viber, and siguro nakikita na sa YouTube, sa Facebook, may mga nag-share ng mga videos na medyo weird, or yung mga memes na parang hindi naman siya totoo, bakit, pa, bakit yun na sinasabi? Di ba? Parang I think every one of us has encountered a lie in all of these social media platforms. That's Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, Messenger, Viber, and even at home or in your um, outside, parang you've also encountered those. So it's something that is really pervasive. It's not something that's just limited to a certain space, but it's actually affecting all of the spaces that we're in. So in the age of social media, everyone is a publisher. So it's now everyone's responsibility, not just journalists, to ensure that the information we're sharing on social media is accurate and factual. So what do, what do we mean by that? When we share on social media, it's not just a bahala na, parang it's my space, it's my page, it's my account, parang who cares? It doesn't, it doesn't work that way anymore. What we share on social media is actually your responsibility because it's actually being consumed by other people as well. So people, that who, people who see what you share can actually be influenced by that. 
and that can actually lead them to, for example, make certain decisions because, oh, your friend ko nag-share ng ganito, so it must be true. So there are a lot of people who might not understand how this information works. Maybe as students now in the current age, seeing as how you're also here in college, you're also aware of how this information works. And perhaps, diba, think before you click, dapat mag-double check, but not all people know that, especially for the older generation who might not have experienced MIL in their senior high school years. Kasi, to be fair, wala pa naman senior high school then, So, diba, wala silang MIL na experience talaga. So we also have to ensure that parang what we share online is actually factual and accurate. It's not something that's just the responsibility of journalists. So what we do online has real life impact. So what do I mean by that? So what we share isn't just something that's just on the social media space. It's not going to affect whatever decisions we make online. It can actually affect what we do in real life. So this access to social media has become a double-edged sword. So while it has made it easy to connect with more people, it has also made them more vulnerable to disinformation and online manipulation. So what happens on social media doesn't just happen on social media. So, but we can do something about this. But before I talk about that, I actually want to share about how um, this information can affect our real life actions. So when, we sh when, when somebody shares false information on social media, it can actually sow panic and trigger irrational responses. So for example, if you promote that a certain um, eating a certain something can actually cure COVID-19, that might actually encourage people to, per to, to consume that kind of something, di ba? And that can actually affect how they view COVID-19, how they move forward with their everyday decisions. And even on social media, for example, during disasters, may nakita kayo na parang nagsasabi na may tsunami daw dito. So parang magpanic na mga people there, especially if they think, that, especially if they have had experience with certain disasters, and then they might, it might so in their rational panic. Aside from that, there's also real world harm or deaths. So this is something that can actually happen. Um, I don't have a lot of time to really go in depth, but it, there is some certain harm that can happen if we share false information. Because for example, that might make them more prone to getting COVID-19 because they think it's something that can protect them from that. So that's one very basic example. So aside from that, it also undermines coherent, scientifically proven prevention and response measures. So maybe I will go back to the disaster lang na example because it's something that can be applicable to all of us. So for example, if we share on social media na parang ah, may sinabi na may parang person daw na trapped sa house na to, and then maybe we have disaster authorities who actually encounter that information on social media, and instead of directing their attention or their, um, their um, efforts to saving people who are actually in danger, they might respond to that instead. And it, it's a waste of resources, it's a waste of time and efforts that could have gone to more appropriate na efforts and solutions. So that's one example that it can affect certain response measures. It also creates fear, confusion, and distrust in authorities. So what exactly can we do? So, sorry. So in the digital age, there are now more opportunities to involve citizens in amplifying issues to communities. So people can share updates in, um, on what's going on in their community and be connected with more people thanks to social media. But there are actually more active efforts that we can do in order to um, combat disinformation. The very basic thing, of course, is just to verify, to ensure that what you're sharing on social media is accurate and factual. And even just sharing, for example, like verified sources of information, maybe just sharing news articles, is also just a major, major big help already because I can actually help more people get access to that content, especially if they don't really follow news media, but then you do. But then if you share it, then it gets amplified to more communities. And that's one basic thing that you can do. But there are definitely many ways that you can participate. And I will talk about one initi initiative that we, um, that we are leading right now. And this is Facts First PH. So you may know there are a lot of fact-checking efforts that are happening um, in different organizations. There are many people who are leading MIL efforts. There are many people leading um, more civic participation initiatives. 
And what we did was at Fast First PH, um, we tried to pull together different sectors to, to help combat disinformation because like Marlon said, um, it's not something that we can do alone. It's something that requires like a multi-sectoral approach. So what we did was at Facts First PH, we actually, inv we actually collaborated with research groups who can help um, write research papers on this info. We also invited legal groups who can help us hold accountable those who are, um, those who are sharing this information on social media. We also invited civil society organizations who can help in amplifying um, these factual content and also to engage with more people to lead fact-checking work workshops or to engage with more people in combating this info. And we also, um, we also work with all these different people, with news media organizations, to create more content. Kasi hindi siya, hindi kaya na isang grupo lang yung gagawa ng content about fact-checking. It's actually a multi-sectoral effort. So, this is what I meant. So first off, we aim to debunk dubious claims being shared in various social media platforms. We also amplified facts and make truth spread faster and further than lies. And we also aim to protect truth tellers and critics that are holding authorities accountable. So this is the multi-sectoral approach, mainly because we felt like there were many layers to the problem that couldn't just be solved by fact-checking. It's something that requires everyone's efforts. And these are the ways that we were hoping that we can address that with the help of Facts First PH. So it's actually um, globally recognized. So it, this is a first of its kind in the Philippines. And actually, um, this was recognized as the most innovative and most um, impactful collaboration at the Global Fact Nine, which goes to show how this could be something that can also be replicated in other countries that are facing very um, intense disinformation. Um, similar to what we are experiencing now. Um, so, for you guys to <laughs> know what I'm talking about, can you try scanning this? So this is our Facebook community. For you to actually see what we're doing, because what I'm saying right now may be a bit, maybe, maybe, may sound a bit abstract. Like, how exactly does that look like? If you scan our <laughs> code and then you join our Facebook community, you can actually see that we have verified content that are being shared there. And they actually manifest in different forms. They manifest in initiatives that actually aim to, for example, lead conversations on, this, uh, on combating disinformation. We also have, for example, comics, because we know when you talk about fact-checking, hindi nilago work na yung text lang kasi hindi naman lahat nagbabasa. We have to adjust to the needs of or the habits of people in order for them to also consume the content that we make. So that might manifest in videos or comics or maybe in initiatives or maybe in me memes that promote MIL. That could be a thing. So you can actually join this Facebook community to also see um, to also see these efforts and also know like ano ba yung mga factual content. You can actually also go there if you're also doubting. Um, you can check their um, organizations that are sharing their own factual content that are part of Facts First PH. So it has a lot of organizations and individuals there that actually want to gain access. Because Facebook is such a big space. Parang san ka, san mo, parang you don't always know where to start. And this is a good place to start. So as an individual also, I want to share how you can join this movement. So there are three ways. You can actually join our Facebook group. So you can refer to this group if you're looking for fact checks to share or initiatives to promote fact checking in your community. And you can also share here if you have any initiatives that actually do the same thing. So you can also share one another. So in order for us to um, rise above the algorithmic manipulation, we have to share one another. So that's what I meant. Now it's uh, actually a major thing already if you already share factual content because then that is shared to your community that may not be following news media or verified sources. So you know naman na medyo, um, medyo difficult ang algorithm ng Facebook, di ba? It's usually with the people that you interact with or um, the, the pages that you like. So maybe that's already a big thing if you get to help out by sharing verified content. 
And you can also lead your own um, initiative. So we need more groups and individuals advocating for truth. So encourage your community to share only factual information. And even if you're part of an organization now, you can also see how you can contribute by leading your own initiatives, especially for the campus publications. Like th that could be something you can also pursue, um, especially given your role in the community and the reach that you have. So basically that's it for me. There are many ways, but this is just a starting point given the limited time. So now more than ever, we need everyone working to together to fight for truth and facts. So again, I'm going to share our QR code so for you guys to join our community. So you can also deepen your advocacy in MIL and also fact-checking. So that's it for me. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ms. Sam, for that presentation. And I think that's a perfect springboard to discuss, uh, to start our panel discussion. Mostly this session will be more focusing on the involvement of the Filipinos when it comes to empowering MIL. And I want to start with a question. For uh, Let's start first with Ms. Tina. What is the role that MIL plays in addressing contemporary social issues? Which includes like what Sir Marlon presented, text camps, historical revisionism, online gender-based violence. What do you think the role of MIL plays on that? Um, before I begin, no, um, I'd like to congratulate the FEU Manila and also the Out of the Box um, Media Information Literacy, uh, Initiative Literacy, and of course our partners for creating this space no, to talk about the, the big issue of, of, this, of this society, which is the disinformation. Um, well, the organization, no, the Foundation for Media Alternative, has been monitoring such cases. Not only the text camps and other, you know, but one of the biggest, I think, that we, um, that we did during, the, during this um, issue is you was up in on all in gender-based violence. No? Apart from having of this such um, um, misinformation, disinformation around in many contexts, nakita din namin that the huge number of cases also increase when it comes to um, gendered disinformation. So when people started um, creating a post or you know sharing some um, some publications or you know, um, it's easy for people to create also a, a, a very bad. the pagamit no but that that
Thank you so much for that, uh, Ms. Tina. How about you, Ms. Sam? Your response to our question about the role of uh, MIL in addressing those issues. Um, for me, I think it's very important for us to go back to the basics now. Um, and I think that's what MIL addresses because in the first place, um, especially with how everyone is on social media and can post online, parang um, nagbago na din yung treatment or how we view opinions. For example, diba palagi natin nakikita yung respect my opinion. And usually that's a conversation ender. Usually the conversation ends there and then there's no, um, it's very hard to combat that. And if, um, why am I bringing this up? I'm bringing this up because um, um, we've reached a point in our time na, na, um, where, op where opinions have, aren't grounded on facts all the time. Parang, and then we've normalized that kind of thing na when facts should inform opinion. It shouldn't be like an optional na yung facts. Optional is just opinion. It should be grounded on facts. And I think that's also part of how this information has really warped how we see facts. And even how um, media is being treated right now. Now, for example, when we report on certain issues, even though that's really what happened, that it's, it, we're reporting what we're seeing uh, as it happens. People can say that that's bias or um, because it doesn't align with their beliefs. It, 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 it's in stark contrast to what they want to happen. When in reality, that, that's really the truth. Um, so I think with MIL, that can really help us in understanding, for example, the roles of media in society as watchdogs, and also for us to realize our responsibilities as digital citizens. Now, when we share online, um, we, also have, we also have a responsibility to make sure that when we share opinions, we also have to be open to, um, we also have to be open to being wrong. Because, um, parang, parang, it doesn't, parang at this, point na, this information has become so normalized that when you spout nonsense parang or of like uh, opinion grounded on um, untrue na information, then people can just say, respect my opinion, that's it. When in reality, that's something that we might have to contest because that can influence other people's beliefs as well. So it's not something that you should just leave unchecked. It's also something that you can also, it can be a running conversation. It, you don't have to. You don't have to change somebody's mind, um, but I think it's important for both parties to just acknowledge that um, at the at the very basic level, we all agree on the facts, and then you can make your own opinion out of that. Wow! Thank you for that. So, from this question, we can really see that the essence is having the positive participation. Nah when we say re responsible digital citizenship, it is about accepting that hindi ikaw ang laging tama. And I want to link that on the question on being a critical thinker na ano yung mga best practices ng bawat organisasyon yung nire-representa na ma ma maturuan natin yung ating mga audience to become critical thinkers during this digital age. You may start again, Ms. Tina. Yeah. Um, um, ano ba yung mga pwedeng gawin, no? This kind, ito yung mga ideas, di ba? Yung mga principles na binidipit namin. Si FMA kasi, uh, we, we are very focused when it comes to human rights. And we directly toward applying it in the digital environment. Kasi parang in acknowledge and recognize namin that what you have offline rights should also reflected even in digital spaces. That's one. Uh, yung rights-based approach. Importante kasi yun eh. Um, anything about na, na enjoy natin ngayon ay dapat pinoprotektahan din in online space. So ano, ano ba yung mga karapatan na yun? One is the freedom of expression, di ba, na kung saan mali ay tayo nakakapagpahayag. Di ba? Second, um, yung protektahan, of course, yung mga datos natin na available online na hindi naman dapat basta-basta kinukuha. No? It has to be um, ask a permission and also a consent. And and among other other rights, diba? Um, second, ang sas tinitingnan din namin is to also to collaborate with other partners. So, si FMA, tinatak namin ang mga uh, mga artists, mga, eh, mga tawag dito, mga graphic artists and illustrators para mas maintindihan ng lower, hindi naman lower, the, the, the grassroots level. Kasi yun yun eh, hindi naiintindihan ng nasa komunidad natin. 
kung ano ba yung sinasabi nating disinformation. Diba? Ang alam nila, fake news yan. Maka-receive ka lang ng text, sabi nila, fake news yan. Pero so, hindi nila na define hindi nila naiintindihan in a large scale. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng misinformation? Ano ba ang difference ng disinformation? And even yung malicious, ano, di ba, information. So, wala silang ganong idea. So, what we did is we tap them and then create a something na madaling i-digest. So, nag-adjust din kami kung ano yung hinihingi ng aming community. Tapos, second, um, the language. Hindi naman lahat nakakaintindi ng English, di ba? Correct me if I'm wrong, di ba? Lahat ng mga websites and any available um, sources online are written in English. So what about the other locals? So sabi nga ng isang tulig ko, no, na who's from um, Samar, sabi niya, oh, Miss Tina, I want to share something, pero gusto ko na sa local context. So I want to be written in Waray. Kasi hindi naiintindihan ng community ko ano ibig sabihin ng disinformation and how it affects. Kasi even in a local community, mataas, nakikita natin kasi yung national level, di ba? But when you go to the ground, kitang-kita mo na mas malala ang disinformation and misinformation. So, so yun lang siguro yung mga pwede. Okay, so before I ask Ms. Sam, let me uh, inform everyone that we will entertain questions from the audience. So habang sumasagot si Ms. Sam, take time to um, think of a question and later on you may raise your hand. I think for the sake of time, we can entertain only one question. So. Um, yan, isip muna tayo ng ating tanong and back to you, Ms. Sam, your response to our question. Thank you for those ideas and best practices that you are doing. Sobrang, um, it is focusing talaga on a very customized way on how Filipinos can participate. And speaking of participation, may I ask from our audience who has a question to our esteemed speakers. Ayan, sige, go ahead. Uh, Ma'am, you can go to our, the middle to the microphone. Again, please state your name and your organization represented before throwing your question. Kasi yung sumasama na may kulasin, sumama siya dun sa 
Wow, that's very interesting question. The thin line between satirical posts and the facts. <laughs> Miss Sam, you want to go ahead first? Okay, or? okay let's give them time to, uh, to process the question. It's, uh, uh, I don't know it's, if it's a way of combating ano, eh, of disinformation na ginagawa nilang in a funny way. Kasi di ba, when, when you create a satire article, well, the gist is there, pero din in ano mo, um, atawag daw yung a kind of correction ay in a funny way para lang des mas maintindihan ng tao. Um, mahirap kasi isipin yun eh, especially if some personalities are involved. So, nagiging blur yung line nila. Kapag halimbawa, um, there was a time, I think it was Kim Atienza, no? um, parang in his face, ma Na-monitor ko siya eh, parang he's very active when it comes to commenting. Pero there was a time yata na na-call out siya because of that kind of joke na binitawan niya in public, on, uh, in online public space. So, so yung mga ganun, so nabablur kasi yung credibility ng isang personality when he joins doon sa, sa usapin na, yun nga yung ISSP, parang school yata kayo or something na grenade. Yeah. Miss Sam? Um, I think I think I'm also kind of it's kind also kind of blurry for me. Um, but I think um, when you think about fact checking content, um, we also we don't always fact check satirical content, especially if it's very obvious that um, it's satirical and also it, it doesn't really have any harm. Like it's not really affecting. Um, it's not really affecting any belief. Or you know, having fun, poking fun at things. Um, so I think if it's if that's the case, it should be fine. For if it's for if there is like an insidious co uh, intent, uh, maybe they will, they will utilize that community later on for other more malicious means. Then that could be something that has to be investigated. But um, I think if it's just for fun and the <laughs> it's not um, for yeah, like you said, it parang blurry nga yung line when it comes to that. Yeah, and I think it will go again to what you're saying. It's about being responsible uh, when you're participating because um, we can really uh, deny the fact that there will be really a blurry line between that. And as a digital citizens, nga, we should be empowering critical thinking. And I think to end this panel discussion, I, re I want to, uh, no, to extend that question. Uh, for more than two years that we've been in online, we've attended, I think all of us attended a lot of training about how to spot fake news. For example, Rappler has lots of runs in Move PH. Even different organizations are running to become, how to become a critical thinker, understanding MIL. But I think, um, and, and even there were movements, and it's, and it's in the second session, about what are the ways to really make MIL, uh, I mean, bannering in the Philippine context. But I think one we should more look about is, is the attitude and the values that we should instill. Because policies and even any documentation cannot change people na immediately. It can help. But I mean, it's the values for a personal perspective. Ano yung pwede nating iwan sa mga kasama natin dito? Na ano yung values or ano yung attitude na dapat taglayin nila when it comes to sa usapin ng MIL and critical thinking? Miss Sam, you want to go to go first? I think in terms of the values or how we interact with people, it's just very important for us to understand that it's an ongoing process. It isn't really something that will end with just one conversation or with one policy, with one initiative. You can't really expect that with one event, um, it's, there's going to be one like massive change in terms of how people view MIL or fact-checking. It might take a series of events, a series of conversations, and even just starting the conversation might be very difficult, especially if you're engaging with your relatives, where it can get very polarizing very quickly because, di ba, para, para ka nagmamalunong, parang ganun, parang di, there's that kind of um, mindset as well. So what we just have to remember is that when engaging with people, you also have to be open and adjust accordingly, meaning hindi ka combative diretso. Dapat um, you acknowledge that um, 
when a, peop when a person is misinformed, there's a reason that that's happened, and it might take many conversations, many years to really chip away from all the year, from all the um, impact that this information has had on this person. So um, it, it, it will take a lot of patience, and on the part of different organizations, it will take a lot of creativity and effort to combat um, this info and promote MIL. Because even with the Facts for Speech initiative, um, there's still so much that we, we have to do, and um, hindi pa din yun enough. So it, it really requires everyone to participate, and I think it's really just important to also promote very simple actions as a starting point, because then they can deepen that. So e that's why even as students, I really think na even yung old saying na think before you click, parang sikat na yun dati pa yung hindi ko pa alam yung parang disinfo pa nga. Pero sikat na yun dati pa. But it's something na we all have to keep in mind. That's something na, that's also why I keep um, talking about how we have to um, be careful about the content that we share because that can reach more people and then that can reach a, a bigger spread of people and then it becomes like this domino effect. So definitely um, the very basic thing that you can do is really just start by sharing verified sources and even just be doubtful also of the content that you consume and make sure that um, you do that. Um, but you also have, there's a caveat in here now, just because this institution is known for um, sharing factual content, it doesn't really make them, um, parang, it doesn't mean that they're infallible. Um, they might make mistakes and you might have to correct them and that's okay. Um, that's definitely one of the responsibilities as citizens. You can hold media accountable, you can correct them. That's part of um, our relationship between the reader and then the news media. Um, so the important thing here is for the news media to also be transparent about the corrections and also to edit accordingly. So I think that's something na on my end. Thanks, Ms. Sam. Ms. Tina? Siguro, if I, if I have a chance no, to teach MIL sa isang institution, kasi parang ako, I'm, I'm always coming from the community days, di ba? Kasi naririnig ko yan lagi, yung mga live realities ng mga ating communities. So sasabihin nila minsan kasi, Ma'am, minsan yung teachers namin, sila pa yung nagpapalaganap ng, no, 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 ng misinformation. I'm sorry to say, no? So, so may mga ganun tayong level of, ano, of, of, ang tawag doon, of stories coming from the communities. So, parang, where do we draw the line kapag ganun na yung pinag-uusapan? Now, you're supposed to be a responsible educator or mentor to correct some, some kind of information na nakikita natin online. That's one. So, Pangalawa yung sensitivity na binabanggit ni, ni, ni Sam, no? uh, importante yon Kasi nga, hindi naman lahat ay nakakaintindi. At iba-iba yung pinanggagalingan karanasan at kwento ng mga nakakabasa at um, yung mga nakakapartner natin yung uh, communities. Um, pangatlo, yung paggamit pa rin ng human rights-based approach. Na, at syempre, gamitan din natin ng, ng lenteng uh, gender. No? Na kung saan, tinitingnan natin intersectional yung approach na hindi lang isang sector lang yung tinitingnan natin if it's uh, something on on politics but we also have to look into um socioeconomic issues na pwedeng kaharapin din of course no mga um nung, nung, nung mga communities na ginagalawan like for instance the digital rights advocates that we formed in 2019 yun yung focus namin is to to also emphasize and create um awareness ano ba yung usapan ng disinformation and misinformation and how we can fight back and how to address this in in our own little way so, so, siguro yung panghuli, um, pag-adhere din, of course, doon sa ethics na meron tayo and of yung safety and security ng mga users. Thank you so much, Ms. Tina. And I think to wrap this session, it is really important to understand, I think the word I should get from it is responsibility. As let's admit the fact that everyone becomes now a digital citizen. And with that, we must take responsibility in stating facts and also taking care of the people behind that. Because at the end of the day, amidst those fake news or misinformation, tao ang nasa likod noon. And I really want to take that, the, the, the sensitivity, I mean, the uh, thinking, um, thinking the people behind that, it's about reaching them out. And why we are doing this? Because we really want to reach them out. And I think that's the way we can empower people when we really take a heart-to-heart -heart, um, initiative to really see na 
at the end of the day, what we really want is a nation that is full of facts and a nation that everyone is digital responsible. And I think that's perfect way to wrap up this session. So let's give a round of applause to our esteemed panel. So we have Ms. Tina from FMA and Ms. Sam from Move PH. And I'm giving back now the floor to our host. Maraming salamat po. Again, another round of applause for our first panel session. Mr. Paolo Ordonio of the Break the Fake Movement, Ms. Tina Lopez from the Foundation for Media Alternatives, and Ms. Sam Bayagas of Move PH of Rappler. So that session, I guess, sparked more than just your interest, hopefully, regarding MIL. But at this juncture, again, let me acknowledge all of our uh, support and the co-organizers, particularly the Far Eastern University Institute of Arts and Sciences. We acknowledge the physical presence of Dean Rowena Capulong Reyes. You've met her a while ago. A round of applause for Dean Wen. And we also acknowledge the presence of our Associate Dean, Genesis John Borja. A round of applause for Dean and Associate Dean. Malakas ang ayas. Ang support po, maraming salamat, Dean Wen and AD Genesis. So, let's take a breather and relax a little. And to those who are still watching us via Facebook Live, keep your questions coming. Let's keep the conversation going. We'll pick up on some of your questions and queries and we'll bring them here in the discussion on the floor. But let me introduce members of the communication society to render us some songs for the intermission number we call onto the stage joey jovia and regeline fernandez a round of applause please
bago Hindi ba ikukubli Ang mundo na binabalo Ng iyong pagkakubli si Regine Fernandez from Musicom and sana nagustuhan niyo po yung hinanda namin kanta para sa inyo lahat. Ikaw ba'y nalulukot na babalot pa ng koo maraming hinanakit sa mundo di alam mo nung gagawin kung di ako sinang oras sa G alam mo iya'y may mararating Hey, kaigan ko Pakinggan mong mga pulong sa'yo Hey, ang higaling sa mundo Pakungo sa pangakong paraiso So alam niyo po yung katawag po kayo may hiyang sumabay ha Ano ba? Asan ang talino mo? Diskarte ka mo ng kano Patakan ng lahat kahit kata mo Minsan ang kagipinan Ay wala sa bigat ng pinapasan Sa sukot pagharap ng kabiguan Carlos mo ulit!
we have another warm round of applause for the representatives from Musicom. And we expect also that the audience, because you're already energized, we look forward to your active participation for the second session. But don't worry, we will also be incentivizing those who would ask their questions and you'll get something in return as a form of gratitude for your active participation. So let's move forward and proceed to the second session entitled MIL Development in the Philippines, Opportunities, Challenges, and Milestones. Let me introduce to you the facilitator for the second session. A former Kapusu reporter, Richelle C. Ko, is an AB Communication Arts graduate of De La Salle University. Upon graduation, she immediately joined GMA News and Public Affairs, where she worked as a reporter and anchor for nine years, covering various important events in the country. Because of her stint in the media, she was one of those chosen to participate in CNN's International Professional Program and was also awarded the Chevening Scholarship, obtaining a Diploma in International Broadcast Journalism from Cardiff University in the process. Now a licensed professional teacher, Rochelle is teaching high school at MGC New Life Christian Academy. She is currently also one of the board members of the Philippine Association for Media and Information Literacy, or PAMIL, serving as its board secretary. She has given numerous talks on MIL topics, as well as moderated some webinars given by Pamil. She believes that her experiences as a former journalist, a teacher, and a mother are a big help as she helps Pamil reach out and educate more learners and educators in its mission to promote MIL in the country. Audience members, a round of applause for Ms. Richelle C. Ho. Thank you very much, Ms. Trixie. Magandang umaga! Yay! Okay, um, this, time, this time I am not there reporting, but I'm actually part of the program, diba? Right? But thank you very much for coming. And it is such a joy and pleasure to be in my first face-to-face -face webinar seminar in the last, I know, for the last how many years, sabi nga ni Marlon, at least hindi na siya mga squares at mga zooms, di ba? Now, anyway, again, good morning, everyone, and welcome to session two of the Global MIL Week Philippine Stakeholders Forum. Again, ako si Richelle C., ang inyong, naks, ang inyong naging saksi dito sa Global MIL Philippine Stakeholders Forum. Now, right now, session two is entitled, MIL development in the Philippines, opportunities, challenges, and milestones. As we all know, the implementation of the K-12 curriculum started with, the for started with the formal teaching of media and information literacy in the senior high school. However, and I know a lot of you um, have observed this, more than six years after its introduction, new challenges have emerged, requiring MIL teachers to adapt and develop in order to be relevant and effective in helping Filipinos become MIL literate and making informed decisions. This panel discussion will focus on the development of MIL in the Philippines in the last few years. We have invited distinguished speakers from different sectors to share their knowledge, experiences, and valuable insights on the diverse efforts in promoting MIL, the different approaches, strategies, and best practices they have adopted, and the opportunities and challenges they've encountered in promoting MIL in the country. So let's get started. Allow me to introduce our distinguished panel of speakers this morning. They'll be joining us here on stage. Our first speaker is none other than Dr. Maria Guineta Y. Pusta, a University Research, Research Fellow from the Institute of Arts and Sciences here at the FEU. Dr. Pusta has a Doctor of Philosophy in Development Studies from the University of Santo Tomas Graduate School. She holds a Master's in Professional Studies degree in Development Communication from the University of the Philippines, Open University in Los Baños, Laguna, and a Bachelor of Arts in Broadcast Communications from the University of the Philippines, Diliman, Quezon City, Philippines. Dr. Pusta is an incumbent Board of Trustee of the Philippine Association of Communication Educators, or PACE, and a former president of the organization as well. 
She's also board of trustee and assistant treasurer of the Philippine Association of Communication and Media Studies Research, Inc. And the president of the International Society of Knowledge Management Practitioners. Let's all give a round of applause for Dr. Pusta. Our second panelist is Mr. Arniel V. Ping, the president of the Philippine Association for Media and Information Literacy, or PAMIL. Mr. Ping is the overall academic coordinator of the high school department at St. Stephen's High School, where he also teaches media and information literacy. He is a founding board member of PAMIL and served as the organization's founding vice president. Right now, he is the president of PAMIL. Mr. Ping is an alumnus of the International Visitor Leadership Program, or IVLP, on promoting media literacy through education, which was held in 2019 in the USA. Mr. Ping obtained his Bachelor in Secondary Education, Major in Social Studies from the Universidad de Manila, and is a candidate for a Master of Arts in Education with a specialization in Social Science Education at the National Teachers College. Let's give a round of applause for Mr. Ping. And our third speaker, but certainly not the last, uh, not the least, is Mr. Judy H. Galieta from the National Council for Children's Television, or NCCT. Mr. Galieta completed his Master's in Communication, Major in Broadcast Journalism at the Polytechnic University of the Philippines. Before his work at the NCCT, he served as an associate producer for GMA's local and inter international programs. Kapuso ka rin pala. Hello, Kapuso. He is now a Project Development Officer 3 at the NCCT as the head of its Programs, Policy, and Research Division. Right now, we would like to invite Dr. Pusta to share with us her short presentation. We are PACE, the Philippine Association of Communication Educators, the oldest, biggest, and most dynamic national organization of teachers of communication, broadcasting, and journalism. Founded in 1975, PACE is a non-stop, non-profit organization of professionals engage in communication education and media practice in the Philippines. PACE aims to foster a responsive and responsible communication education towards a just society. PACE is committed to promote excellence in communication education and ethical practice in the profession, to initiate and participate in policy review and formulation, and to serve as a catalyst for social change. SEC Register as the Philippine Advocates of Communication Education Association Incorporated in 2018. PACE has been known for its pioneering programs and projects. With the help of its partners, PACE has expanded its professional network to pursue its mission vision. PACE continues to grow, making an impact on its members and partners all over the country for four decades now. Join us. We are PACE. Enjoyed our video. 
So a pleasant morning to all the distinguished panelists, organizers, stakeholder partners, and guests. My presentation on the challenges and opportunities begins with a closer look into the merging field of media and information literacy. I think I do have a PowerPoint. And uh, the diverse efforts in promoting MIL in the Philippines, then we shall examine the strategies and approaches and best practices in a national effort to embed MIL in the senior high school curriculum and conclude with a presentation of the daunting challenge, challenges confronting media scholars and researchers as I raise significant queries about the critical assessment of information. In my synthesis, I will present the emerging opportunities to scholars in the field. The emerging field of media and information literacy studies continues to be influenced by a wide range of interdisciplinary research. Media studies frequently address literacy concerns as they relate to news construction, audience perception of stories, and cultivation of long-term beliefs. At the same time, library studies have been at the heart of questions related to how people seek, find, process, and use new information. Diverse efforts have been poured into the formulation and implementation of the MIL curriculum across all strands. The U.S. Embassy even sponsored observational trips to the United States in an effort to solidify our MIL program. Senior high school faculty members of the, my former university, University of Santo Tomas, underwent trainings and workshops, not only on the pedagogy of teaching MIL in these trying times of pandemic, but also took off to the US to observe some of the best practices of MIL. In this global age, a challenge for researchers will be to blend media and information studies. This is according to Hilt in 2005. In digital culture, for example, conflicting engagements of trust and doubt permeates. The challenge is to seek answers to this question. How does critical assessment of information and information sources play out as it is folded into network information infrastructure in which different types of information are mediated and shaped by the same algorithms and flattened into the same interfaces. Specifically, we foreground the interplay of trust and agency and how these are perceived and enacted in relation to the specific conditions and affordances in this information infrastructure. We argue that critical assessment of information as an element in media information literacy must be understood not just in relation to how it is used to judge the credibility of information, but also regarding how it is performatively enrolled in the shaping of knowledge and the creation of ignorance and trust. Even though MIL seems to be thriving, media literacy assessment remains to be an issue of concern. According to Livingstone and to Min in 2003, there is little consensus over the appropriate way to measure media literacy. And this is reflected in the variety of ways media literacy is assessed. Livingstone and Thomas state that different research methodologies and samples make it difficult to draw comparisons. Scharrer argues that even though there is generalized understanding about what media literacy outcomes are, they are often not explicitly defined and measured. For purposes of understanding critical assessment of information, we are primarily interested in the enactments of trust as well as reflections on these enactments in relation to the society's algorithmic information infrastructure and the specific situations in which people and their practices are part of it. Enactments of trust include also, it's contrast. There are mainly framed as mistrust or distrust, where mistrust refers to vigilance and caution, while distrust is characterized by cynicism and suspicion. In relation to critical assessment of information, this means that with distrust, the burden of proof for being critical is shifted, and the question changes from how 
Is this true? To how is this false? And extended to the entire system for knowledge production. Carefully paying attention, therefore, to these dimensions of trust in relation to today's algorithmic information infrastructure, allow us to elucidate how critical assessment of information as a cornerstone for media and information literacy is destabilized through the intermixing of institutional trust with personal trust and the morphing of mistrust with distrust. The premise for assessing information is that we cannot know everything ourselves. We have to trust others and their knowledge. This knowledge can be referred to as testimonial knowledge. There is also secondhand knowledge or evidence depending on your disciplinary tradition. All of this is embedded into the larger institutional arrangements and mediated to the information networks. Effectively, these institutions and their various manifestations constitute information sources in their own right, providing us with the testimonial knowledge, and we are understood to function as cognitive authorities. This sounds straightforward enough. However, the networks involved in the actual ways in which this trusting is enabled are extremely intricate, historically grown, technically technically complex and culturally shaped. They in turn require trust in the complex system, their abstract methods, their technologies, their people, their standard setting bodies, and much more. Now you might ask, so what remains of us now? What are the opportunities? And I will focus from uh, the lens of a researcher and focus on the credibility and assessment of information. A recurrent theme in research on credibility assessment of information is the notion of being critical. Unsurprisingly, what being critical implies varies. A deductive logic, so important to science, builds on the notion of criticizing theories. In this context, being critical is taken to mean critical thinking in the sense of questioning what is taken for granted. Um, according to Savolini, detects a disputational discourse noting the negative criteria surpass the positive criteria in the credibility judgments. In particular, a different line of research, often starting from the work of Kapitsky and Elmberg, emphasizes the critical notion of information literacy somewhat differently and goes beyond critical thinking. The crafting of ignorance, we argue, also involves the reverse engineering of media and information literacy, which appears to be performatively enlisted in the creation of uncertainty by indiscriminately devising trust as an individual responsibility and truth as a matter of personal choice from this marketplace of ideas, cast, of course, in neoliberal framing. The discourse of doubt necessitates the ideal of the skeptical evaluator and its material discursive construction is folded into today's individualizing and polarizing information infrastructure. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so, thank you so much for that, Dr. Pusta. That's so, so informative and there's so much to unpack. But before we unpack that, let's listen to our other speakers first. Mr. Ping, can you tell us something more about PAMIL and the steps it has been doing so far? Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, first, good morning. Uh, thank you very much for being here. Good luck, fellow teachers and uh, students and co organizers. Um, uh, this is a conversation for media and information literacy for PAMIL. This is a representation of uh, MIPM educators, uh, advocates, practitioners. We also have Not of our uh, events, no? the international focus of our uh, media and information literacy. Recognition to na yung media at saka information yung patuloy sa nagbabago. At tulad ng nabangit ka nila ni Marlon, yung mga issues kasi natin, these are moving targets. Di ba yung fake news, quote-unquote fake news na na-offset sa kanila ngayon, these are not the same fake news that happened before. Di ba yung mga techniques, how we are being targeted as targets, as targets. There are new sort of 
Hindi. Di ba? May, 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 meron bang malakas na ulan, babahaba sa, sa area namin? May pasok ba o wala? Di ba? Kailangan nyo ng MIL. Di ba? Para ma-distinguish nyo kung mamaya fake news pala. May pasok pala sa FEU. Tapos hindi kayo pumasok. And uh, yung uh, MIL webisary namin, uh, partnership with the Communication Foundation for Asia, uh, ang dahilan nito, Kasi kapag kausap namin yung youth, kapag kausap namin yung students, ang lagi nila sinasabi sa amin, eh sir, ang nagkakalat ng fake news, yung mga matatanda, matatanda sa family, di ba? Yung, yung uncle, si auntie, <laughs> share ng share ng fake news. Laging yun ang tinatanong sa amin, laging nare-reason ng mga kabataan. Eh, I guess, for most of you, issue rin yun. So naisip namin, Kasi karamihan nung webisary namin, puro sa educator, uh, academic yung discussion, why not gumawa tayo para sa, hindi lang sa educator, isama natin yung pamilya. So gusto namin maging usaping pamilya, di ba? Yung usaping pamilya, yung ating engagement sa media and information. Uh, this 29, October 29, we have our episode 5. Invite ninyo yung mga aunties and auntitas ninyo na nagkakalat ng fake news. Sabihin nyo, requirements sa school. Pag hindi sila umaten, wala kayong grade. Joke lang, be more innovative. Uh, Mag-isip kayo ng paraan para ma-invite nyo sila, para makinig sila. No? So, pwede tayong magsimula dyan. Okay? Tapos, uh, yung Ed Oboto, isa sa pinakamahirap yan na task, pero very uh, fulfilling. Ano? Uh, gusto ko munang itanong sa inyo, sa tingin niyo bakit ba invested kami Sa MIL. Bakit ang FEU gusto mag-invest sa, sa MIL? Bakit yung mga organizations na nandito, invested kami sa MIL? Bakit ba? Anong meron sa MIL? ba diba? Dapat malaman natin yan. Uh, of course, we wanted people to be empowered, to have that uh, skills, yung knowledge, pati kasama dun yung attitude natin. Now, when we deal with media and information. Pero dapat, dapat tandaan natin, ultimately, Kaya kami nandito kasi ang MIL will empower us to exercise our democratic rights. ba diba sa isang demokratikong bansa, katulad ng Pilipinas, kung saan tayo, kayo, ay, alam ko karamihan sa inyo ay butante na, ba diba, nagpa-participate tayo eh sa proseso at kasama doon yung pagboto natin, pagboto ninyo. Para makaboto tayo ng, ng tama, kailangan natin ng, ng informasyon. kailangan nating ma-discern no, ano ba yung mga informasyon na dumarating sa atin, natatanggap natin, kasi magiging bahagi ng attitude nyo yan. Magiging bahagi yan ng inyong preferences, no, yung pagpili ninyo. So, dapat tandaan natin na yung ultimate goal ng MIL is for you to be able to exercise your, your political rights. Kasama doon yung freedom of expression. Paano ka mag-express mag, mag ng, ng freedom or ng right mo kung puro fake news ang tinatanggap mo? ba? Diba? How, how can you engage in a meaningful discussion kung puro, puro false information ang, ang nakakarating sa'yo? So, alam namin na hindi sapat yan, pero kahit pa paano, iniisip namin na ang Edo Boto ay isang, isang you know, malit lang na contribution na, patuli, na 
patuloy nating ano gagawin. Ah, uh, syempre yung debate cup. Ito isa rin sa pinakamahirap na activity. Uh, masaya kami kasi marami mga estudyante from different parts of the Philippines sumali sa debate. Ang tumulong sa amin dito yung UST Debate Club kasi ma ibang mundo ang debate, di ba? Ibang ibang mundo ang debate club. Yung mga nakakait ako medyo hindi ko pa siya naiintindihan kung wala kang background for debate. Pero nakakatuwa no na nagkaroon ng debate mula sa kabataan, mula sa mga estudyante ng MIL doon sa iba't ibang issues. And siguro panghuli yung uh, conversations. So yung conversations na ginagawa namin hindi lang sa amin, tayo sa Pilipinas. Gusto rin nating malaman ano pa yung ginagawa doon sa ibang bansa. Ano yung mga practices nila? Pwede tayong matuto sa kanila. But at the same time, ipinagmamalaki ko rin na meron din kasi tayong unique practices tsaka best practices na interesado silang matuto sa atin. No? So, uh, nilalawakan natin yung conversations natin and I'm very happy na naging bahagi tayo no, ng, ng event na to kung saan uh, ang daming stakeholders, ang daming organizations ang nandito And we will definitely you know, continue the conversations. Uh, gusto namin kasama kayo doon. No? And that's the reason why you are here. Gusto namin, kasi mahalaga yung role ninyo. Okay? Mahalaga yung role na gagampanan ng, ng, ng youth, ng kabataan, para maging successful yung efforts namin. So maraming salamat sa pakikinig. Ituloy natin yung tanong mamaya. Thank you so Thank you, Sir Arniel, for that. As a fellow member of FAMIT, I totally agree with everything he says. <laughs> no, but um, moving on, Mr. Galieta, can you tell us about NCCT and its efforts in promoting MIL? Yes, thank you, Po. Um, good morning, everyone. And um, gusto ko lang magpasalamat din po sa, sa pag-invite sa NCCT and sa aking mga kasama. Hello, Hannah and Vien. They are here po na... tulungan ang ating programa para may pakilala ang um, ginagawa ng NCCT pagdating sa larangan ng MIL. Next slide, please. Po. Yes, uh, NCCT or the National Council for Children's Television is a government agency, uh, an attached agency of the Department of Education, but they have their own mandate. Mayroon silang uh, sariling programs, mayroon silang sariling funding, and mayroon ding sarili ang NCCT. So, Uh, pagdating sa media and information literacy services, ang NCCT ay naatasan na gumawa ng programa pagdating sa media education. However, nung ginawa po ang NCCT ay panahon pa ng television. And yes, and that was in 1997. E ngayon, kumpara na natin, wala pang internet po noon. So, while we are limited with the mandate that was given to us, Nandito yung inisyatibo ng NCCT para ituguyod din ang advokasya ng MIL. Like yung uh, mga representations natin po ngayon, si Dr. Pusta ay isang researcher, si Sir Arniel, and kayo po ay nasa akademiya, ang NCCT ay nasa larangan ng public service. So, ang, 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 ang perspective nito ay i-translate si MIL sa public service. Uh, nandoon yung nandoon yung struggle na ang konsepto kasi ng MIL is very uh, what do you call this overwhelming pagdating sa 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 public service and kapag ibaba natin yan sa sa mga stakeholders natin um, we were able to identify three stakeholders ng MIL um, yung children who are 17 years old and below Uh, the parents, the guardians, and basic education teachers. So, ito po yung mga uh, recipients or particip stakeholders ng NCCT pagdating sa MIL. And then, yung mga konsepto natin sa, sa MIL, itinatranslate natin, ibinababa natin yun sa kanila. Mahirap ipaliwanag yung konsepto ng MIL sa pagkakaalam natin ngayon doon sa grassroots, doon sa, sa mga bata, doon sa mga magulang or guardians. Pero, pero sa konsepto ng basic, sa, sa, sa teachers, um, sino po dito yung mga sadyante na galing or produkto ng K-12? Yung, ayan, ang dami. So, 
I believe na naabutan niyo po yung MIL na subject nung ano, tama. So, <laughs> madami. So, almost lahat po sila dito. So, yung mga teachers ninyo ang isa sa mga sa mga recipients sana or tinatarget ng NCCT pagdating sa MIL. Uh, maraming usapin dyan, mala malawak na debate, malawak na usapin yan kung ano ang paano ang MIL sa curriculum ng, ng basic education sa Pilipinas. Pero, hindi yun, hindi, hindi parehas yung ginagawa ng NCCT at saka sa, sa, sa DepEd pagdating sa MIL. Sa mga bata, ah, uh, Yung concern namin dito is para lamang turuan sila kung paano mag kung paano intindihin yung yung media text, yung media message. Uh, ini-introduce natin sa lahat ng mga stakeholders na yan yung konsepto ng MIL, yung diniskus kanina ni Sir Marlon from 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 the access, the 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 anal from access, analyze, uh, evaluate and create. Nandoon yan. And sinasamahan natin diyan, sinasamahan natin ng konsepto ng child-friendly content standards kasi sa NCCT meron isang standards na ginawa ang, ng aming council kung paano masasabi at kung kailan masasabi ng isang media program or media content ay isang pambatang palapas. Basically, ganun yon So, ini-introduce namin yan sa mga magulang, sa mga bata, sa mga guro. At pagdating sa mga bata, Ang hinihingi lang namin ay makagawa sila ng informational video na dumaan sa mga na dumaan sa uh, sa mga konsepto ng MIL. Si Sir Marlon, inimbitahan namin siya na maging speaker sa 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 mga bata. We call it Telebibo. We call it Telebibo. So, alam ni Sir Marlon kung ano ang struggle na i-translate ang konsepto ng MIL para mas maintindihan ng mga bata. And Ang mga bata dito, hindi lang mga estudyante. We want to be inclusive, kaya isinasama namin ang mga out-of-school youth and sa mga IPs. So, may mga, may mga struggle tayo dito, may mga walang gadget, pero hindi mo pwedeng hanapin yung mga kung sino lang ang mga may gadget dahil madami pa rin mga bata sa Pilipinas ang walang access sa, sa internet. So, hanapin mo mag-adjust ang programa mo para sa kanila. Next is para sa mga parents naman, ito yung, uh, ito yung isa sa mga um, ginagawa at inaaral ng NCCT kung paano ma-sustain ang proyekto niya para sa mga, pamil para sa mga magulang. Unang-una, ang hirap nilang, uh, mahirap makipag-agawan sa kanilang oras dahil busy-busy busy sila. So, may ginagawa tayo na At the end of the program, sana makagawa sila ng very basic na family media plan. Pero bago sila makagawa niyan, uh, may mga stages silang pinagdadaanan, consultations with our speakers. Uh, inaaral nila dito, may mga survey na pinapagawa si NCCT para maobserbahan nila ang media behavior ng kanilang mga anak or ang mga batang kasama nila sa bahay nila. And then after that, isa-survey natin kung anong mga content ang pinapanood or na-access ng kanilang mga anak. And para sa last na, na stage ay makagawa sila ng family media plan. Sila mismo ang gagawa, uh, ang magpaplano kung anong management ang gusto nila sa kanilang mga anak pagdating sa media consumption. And last, sa ating mga guro, uh, dahil ang MIL ay nasa senior high, ang... NCCT naman ay kinakapacitate natin ang mga teachers natin, especially sa elementary and high school, grade 7 to 10, kung paano gumawa ng learning plan, distance learning plan, na may MIL integration. So, nandito sa, sa programang ito sa mga teachers, um, gusto kong susugan yung sinabi ni Dr. Wang na ang FEU ang tahanan ng MIL dahil karamihan sa mga resource person or Speakers namin sa MIL pagdating sa mga teachers ay galing sa FEU. So, sina Dr. Pamitan, sina Dr. Um, Castro, yes, and even Ma'am Liz, kasama din namin, Ma'am Liz Abanto, kasama din namin yan sa NCCT. So, ang FEU ang tahanan, yes ma'am, ayan, maraming salamat po, tahanan ng MIL. So, basically, ito ang ginagawa ng NCCT, ang, ang isa sa mga, or ang sangay ng Um, gobyerno 
pagdating sa MIL. So, kaiba si NCCT and si DepEd. Maraming salamat. Thank you. Thank you po, uh, Sir Judy. Uh, if, as you can see, no, and dami na palang mga ginagawa ng iba't ibang mga organizations to promote MIL. And from this, um, can we look at what are the different strategies or best practices na nagawa niyo or sa tingin niyo talagang nag work Dr. Pusta. By and large, I will share with you what DSCCGI has done because when MIL was introduced in USD, um, it was also an opportune time for me to write by invitation a book on media information literacy with Oxford University Press. So when I did the training for the faculty of uh, senior high school, um, it, it went on several levels. No? Awareness should not be at the level only of the MIL teacher uh, because in high school, many subjects can be co-integrated. So I suggested to them that it's one thing to offer it as a standalone subject, MIL, but another thing to make sure that the other subjects also can embed some skills and some practices in MIL within the context of that subject, whether it be sociology, psychology, or the basic humanities. Why is this important? Um, because MIL cuts across all strands. It's offered to all senior high school students. Uh, you don't study how to analyze, how to criticize, how to uh, do an assessment in just one sitting. It's a practice, eh? it becomes a habit. But before it could become a habit, it, it begins, of course, with the teachers. They have to be not only well-informed, they have to be well-trained. So they went also through a series of workshops, um, participated or mainly facilitated by members of our communication department then in USC. Why? Because we have the cutting edge. We know production, we know critical thinking, we can combine several strategies. That's one. Um, the management of senior high school also sent some faculty members to an observational tour in the US. I don't know why US was the choice, but they did go and stay there for a month. They went to different high schools uh, offering MIL just to observe how, what their strategies and approaches were. That's a good starting point. But I was sharing with the principal and the assistant principal that what's more important or significant to me is that MIL is taught in the context of Philippine culture. Uh, Asian culture is far different from the individualistic society of the West. No? And I said, Asian cultures, na fam more on, on the family, there's familiarity. I, I told them that is why you know, we can start re-educating them by revisiting some values and using MIL programs you know, to make them analyze, to make them revisit, to make them reflect. And I will underscore in the word reflect. So these were the approaches. And up until present time, it seems naman, it seems naman that stable naman. <laughs> the professor teaching MIL in high school was my former mentee from college. And also I chaired as, her, as his panel for his uh, MA degree in USD as well. So I think they're in good hands. And they're using my MIL Oxford book. Unfortunately, I cannot promote it any longer because the regional office of Oxford in Malaysia had uh, decided to shut down and they just finished distribution of the books. But because USA had already made an investment way back, so they have still, I think, uh, a continuous uh, use of the ebook copies of MIL. I hope I answered your question from an academic point of view. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Sir Arniel, from the panel perspective. Um, I just would like to add to what uh, Dr. Pusta mentioned that you know MIL is a transversal skills, meaning to say it cuts across discipline, uh, regardless of, of the, the subject, English, math, social, Filipino, and in college, uh, regardless of the program that you have, there's an opportunity for you to apply media and information literacy skills. 
the mere fact that you access information, that you need information, that you need to analyze and evaluate information before you can come up with, let's say, a project. Uh, I'm also involved with the understanding and utilizing uh, media for teaching no, by NCCT, where we teach, uh, train teachers uh, teaching different subjects how to integrate uh, media and information literacy in teaching. Now, this is my challenge to you. Uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, most of you are product of the K-12, so definitely you took up uh, MIL as a core subject. My challenge is this. Find a way for you to integrate MIL in your projects. You know, way, way back, I was invited by a group of students because they have a business plan. Oh, okay, it's a business plan. Teka, why do you need me for your business plan? The business plan is not promoting any product or services, but the business plan, again, uh, business plan is to promote MIL. So imagine it's a business plan, but they want the business plan uh, to prom how they could promote MIL. Uh, there's a group of photography students, and they are interested on, on, on how MIL can be integrated in their output. So there, I hope at this point, no, we will not just uh, invite teachers, but, but students as well to make, if you want your, your, your product or output or any impact project to be unique, it's an opportunity. Y you have experts in FEU. You can approach them on how MIL, MIL can be integrated in your projects. Th that will be my challenge. Yes, may very good project, definitely. Sir Judy, kayo po. Any best practices? Ah, uh, yes. Meron din naman. <laughs> yeah. sa, go, sa, sa, sa NCCT po ay, um, although ngayon sinisimulan pa lang, mahirap, kas, mahirap mag-organize ng, ng program, ng project na, na lalo na ang, ang stakeholder mo or, uh, main audience mo ay sa grassroots. So, sinusubukan po ng NCCT na gawing systematic and strategic yung, yung approach niya kung paano siya i-organize. Um, for, our, for our media literacy for parents, uh, we partnered with four peace recipients. Uh, so we, we partnered with um, DSW NCR and then binigyan po nila kami ng, ng pagkakataon to work with DSWD um, Mandaluyong. So, we are targeting yung mga existing organizations already sa government para hindi mag, magsimula ng panibagong proseso po. Gaya ng 4 piece dahil ang mga 4 piece meron silang monthly na meeting and organized na po ang mga 4 Pero... Yun yung tina-target namin na, na gawing a partner din dahil hindi na kami mag-organize ng meeting for them pero yung meeting na nila yung, kailang, yung kung saan na lang kami mag-join. And also, we, we partnered with um, non-government organization, um, group of women in Marikina. Very, very, ano po sila, very uh, participative po sila. And it's supported by the local government of Marikina. So, tinatarget po namin yung mga organizations na mayroon na pong established na, na proseso para hindi po mahirapan si NCCT or yung organizers kung kailan or yung communication and in the collaboration and how to, to, to cascade the information. So, basically, yun po. And in the succeeding years, makagawa tayo na uh, ma-penetrate natin yung, yung bigger audience for, for this. And for teachers um, and for kids, um, different story. <laughs> Kasi may kanya-kanya silang mga strength and challenges po. Bawat group of participants or group of audience mayroong kanya-kanyang mga uh, environment na kailang i-address. If I just may add, um, that's why we in PACE, because one of our thrusts is also media monitoring. Every now and then, we hold webinars mm -hmm. on MIL. 
Tinti ko na rin the Philippine Association for Communication and Media Studies researcher. Even though the trust is in research, we do webinars touching based on MIL, touching based on certain domains of MIL as well. That's not only to reach out to the public, because after the awareness and the consciousness, as I mentioned earlier, it's the habit formation that matters most. Eh? Yeah? It's, it's the practice. How do you practice it? And when the practices are good enough, you have a number of best practices, then hopefully it can be replicated by others. Yes. I just want to add, uh, sometimes you don't need to start with MIL. No, parang, oh, media and information literacy, teka muna. Ano ba yan? Uh, like for instance, in one of our feedback session, one topic that resonated with parents is uh, the idea that they are giving gadgets as a babysitter to their child. So nag-resonate yung, uh, yung, yung talk na yon, yung particular topic na sa parents, and now they are interested with meal parenting. Okay? Uh, minsan naman, you don't, minsan, di ba, pag sinabing fact-checking, medyo parang, okay, fact-checking. Pero minsan, hindi natin kailangan sabihin fact-checking eh. Sometimes we don't need to use the word fact-checking, but maybe uh, verifying sources of information, that is something that you can integrate in, 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 as a practice with what you're doing. Misan di natin sinasabing fact-checking, but don't just rely on a single source. Make it a habit. Di ba parang yung mga sudyante, si walang pasok, sinong nagsabi? we, Di ba? Itanong natin kay, kay president or itanong natin kay teacher, kay professor. Di ba parang dapat may ganun tayong, we don't call that fact-checking, pero alam natin na that is what? Verifying your sources of information or you don't just rely on a single source. Di ba? Kaya tayo nabibiktima dahil we rely on a single source. Di ba? So, minsan, hindi fact-checking, hindi media literacy, or hindi agad MIL, but we uh, try to look for issues that would resonate to them. No? Kung tatanin ko kayo, kayo as students, ano ba yung mga issues na sa tingin ninyo pwede nating i-relate yung MIL as a, as a process no, para to address no yung or siguro to have a better understanding of, of those issues and concerns di ba lalo na tayo so we're trying to to do that now uh, identifying kung ano yung mga opportunities ano yung mga aspeto na pwedeng pumasok no ang media and information literacy and hopefully sabi nga ni Dr. Pusta maging bahagi siya nung, nung, nung habits natin, no? maging bahagi siya nung, sabi nga, maging bahagi nung pag-uugali nating mga Pilipino. Agree. And as Sir Aniel said, um, hindi naman kailangan MIL lang siya eh. For example, wala, kakatapos lang ng 10 sino sa inyo naglazada at nag-shopee? <laughs> Yung mga binili niyo ba, did you buy it on the spot or did you check the reviews? Did you check the, the stars? Diba? It's a check nyo, ay, isa lang review nyo to, pangit eh. Ito check ako, the, the more reviews, diba, you, you double check, pupunta ka sa grocery. Okay ba tong binili ko, parang hindi yata. Diba? So, these are basic things that we need to know, we need to have. And sometimes, it's just basic common sense, which is not exactly very common now, right? Yes, but um, taking off, bro. Uh, by the way, please prepare your questions. Uh, as Chris, Ms. Montrix, he said earlier, we have tokens for those who will ask. Okay. Uh, Ma'am, I just, it's just my observation, right? But for the last six years, we have been teaching MIL in school. It's, it was rolled out, the curriculum guide was uh, rolled out 2013. We started teaching it to 2016, more than six years now. But if you look at our um, current situation in the country, parang lalo nagiging, sorry for the term, but parang lalong nagiging uto-uto ang mga Pilipino. In fact, the latest Pulse Asia survey said that nine of ten Filipinos believe that fake news is a problem. Yeah. And with the many different approaches the, all the stakeholders have been doing, problema pa rin siya. So, why do you think this is so, ma'am? Ano bang pinaka-problema natin na hindi natin na-address? Okay, um, let me start off with two assumptions, no? The first assumption being is that 
um, in, in a democracy such as ours, when there is no legislation, walang ngipin ang pag, pagpapatupad ng mga ibang bagay. Hindi ko sinasabi na i-curtail natin ang freedom of expression natin bi bilang Pilipino. Sinasabi ko po ay kinakailangan ma-empower even at local government level units so that they too can do media monitoring, not just the teachers, not just the students because they are projects in school, and not even just space because space uh, does that, no? media monitoring. Isa po yun. Uh, pangalawa, uh, dagdagan ko lang po yung sa government end. Kinakailangan din po natin turuan at reorient ang ating mga political leaders kasi hindi po sila marunong sa MIL. Hindi po sila marunong mag-communicate properly sa kanilang mga constituents to the point na every, almost every type of communication is politicized. Parang pangalan ni Gov ang laging binabanggit, pangalan ni Mayor. L let's do away with the personalities and focus more on the true meaning of democracy. No? Bring the services down to the level of the people. So both ways, you reorient and we have NCCT doing that for us because their major stakeholders are at the, yung nga gusto ko kasi grassroots sila eh, no? uh, talagang sa frontliner. Pero kailangan segundahan sila. Kailangan maging legislation. Uh, diba? So kung may clout kayo, shout out to VP Sara Duterte <laughs> if you're listening to our forum. It's, it's about time that uh, it be not a matter of education anymore. It be a matter of practice. And the second assumption is it's culture-based. Yes. Tanggapin mo man natin o hindi, malaki po ang, ang kabuluhan ng kultura sa pagpapalaganap, hindi lamang ng informasyon. Kaya nga nauso si Marites at yung ibang variation sa pangalan niya, no? Uh, may, meron kang nagtatanong sa akin dati, ah, do, lekha ho bang chismosa ang Pinoy? Ay, hindi naman po. <laughs> Sabi ko, hindi naman po lekha ang chismosa. Um, the, yung notion ng po na gustong ma, malaman. Kaya nga po ang department namin may alam, may pakialam. Kasi it resonates with the younger generation now. So yun, yun yung two assumptions ko. Hindi sila sa nagre-retrogress. Kulang kasi kung sila lang. Kulang kung akadim lang. Kailangan lahat ng major stakeholders sa bansa kasama. Mas madali po sa Amerika eh. Well, by observation, um, through readings and all. Federal state po kasi sila. So, empowered yung federal state nila and they have the budget. Kaya napapatupad nila, no? Nang maayos yung MIL nila. Dito po sa atin, dahil archipelagic tayo, <laughs> kanya-kanya po tayo. Ay, hindi na po tayo kailangan magkanya-kanya. Kasi pwede naman pagkaisahin. At marami naman po mga organisasyon na tumutulong para uh, mapalaganap ito. Kailangan nang po na beyond the academe, pa-partner si government, pa-partner si local government, pa-partner yung leaders. Kasi pag nangyari po yun, mas talagang magiging uh, attitude at habit na siya. Uh, naniniwala pa rin ako na matatalino ang mga botante, botanting Pilipino at hindi sila ututo sa kabila ng nangyari. Uh, kasi pag sinabi natin na ututo or may bobo botante, it's, it's victim blaming. At pag sinisina natin yung tao, there's no more solution to it. Di ba? Parang oh, kasalanan nyo yan eh. Then that's it. That's the problem with victim blaming. You don't look at the situation as a social concern. You see that as a as a personal problem. Therefore, kasalanan mo yan. But when we see this as a social issue or as a so, or social concern, we'll be able to have a better way to analyze and hopefully be able to come up with solutions. Kaya nga, minsan tinatanong namin as advocates, no, parang may papuntahan pa ba 
yung ginagawa natin. ba? Diba? Yung, uh, ang sagot, oo. Kailangan hinta, hindi tayo sumuko. No? As an educator, hindi tayo susuko. We will continue uh, teaching our students, not just those in the classroom, but outside in the classroom. Uh, we will continue with our advocacy. Uh, we will continue to use our platforms no, to empower people. Yun ang gusto natin eh, for them to be able to come up with uninformed decisions. Kaya nga sabi ko kanina, napakahalaga ng MIL para sa Pilipinas. Uh, yung paraiso na pangako, di ba? yung mga political and social changes, mangyayari lang yan pag may political changes tayo. Di ba? How can we expect di ba, na ma-resolve ba yung traffic, di ba, yung mga simpleng problema, ma-resolve ba ang corruption, and all the problems that we have right now, itong mga ex-socio and economic reforms, kung yung political that, you know, system natin ay hindi maayos. Okay? So, napakahalaga ng political reform. And dito papasok yung, sa political uh, system natin, sabi ko mga kanina, the mere fact na tayong mga Pilipino bilang mga citizens no uh, ang ay gumagawa ng desisyon no lumalahok tayo sa isang eleksyon the more reason that we need to promote MIL okay MIL will not tell you who to vote hindi yon ang 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 trabaho ng MIL but to empower you with all the skills for you to be able to evaluate information, ma-discern ninyo alin dito yung information na tama at mali. And at the end of the day, you'll be able to come up with that decision na may pagmamalaki mo at decision na irirespeto natin lahat. Di ba? Yun ang ano eh. Yun, yun ang dahilan. Kaya tayo nandito. No? That's the, for me, that's the ultimate goal on why we are keep on investing on media and information literacy. At alam, alam namin na mahalaga yung ginagawa namin, pero hindi siya sapat. It's a realization. Uh, yung ginagawa ng academy, ng academ, hindi siya sapat. Uh, yung sa research, yung ginagawa namin sa, ng, ng government, hindi siya sapat eh. No? Uh, kung kami lang, hindi siya kaya. So, that's why I, we, we love this uh, opportunity for uh, People from different sectors, organizations from different sectors are, are, are having this conversation at kasama kayo doon. Okay? Kasama kayo sa conversations. Mahalaga kayo. Hindi lang kayo audience. Uh, gusto kong linawin nito ha. Hindi lang kayo audience. Malag mahalaga yung magiging role ninyo dito sa advocacy natin no? para ma-promote ang media and information literacy. Thank you. Sir Judy, anything to add? Siguro, yes. Um, I remember po this bill uh, filed by Kabataan Party List, um, then Sara Ilago, and I think refiled by Representative Manuel. Um, they want to institutionalize MIL in the basic curriculum, so junior high and the grade level or elementary level. So hopefully with that, makatulong po sa, sa polisiya natin. I mean, of course, it's just one, parang um, small initiative lang siguro yan, but I agree with what Dr. Pusta said a while ago na sana din yung mga LGUs natin will be able to have access sa MIL dahil mahalaga sila pagdating sa paggawa ng polisiya, pag-execute. Tama naman po na based na sa nakapunta sa grassroots na mga um, audience natin sa MIL, sa NCCT, ay they know the concept, pero during, observation po ito, during the, pro the activity, they know. Um, pero since yung program po ng NCCT is pang ma um, sinusubukan na kunin yung sustainability niya, may mga engagements pa after. Pero pagdating mo, kapag binalikan mo na sila, nawawala na yon Nawawala yung practice. So, hindi na nagiging consistent. And sa isa, yes, hindi na po siya nagiging sustainable. At yun yung kailangan natin. Ang MIL pa naman, yung impact niya, hindi siya overnight, kundi pang matagalan. So, yun yung tinitingnan and explore ni, ni NCCT. And Sir Pao can attest to this from the Break the Fake 
news movement na um, and Miss Hana and Miss Vien na yung consistency din ng pag-embrace sa MIL sa sa, sa kabuuang konteksto ng MIL ay mahirap i-sustain. Um, so kailangan ng uh, siguro ito is regular na na follow up sa ating mga kung sino man sa mga estudyante, sa mga teachers, sa mga LGU siguro. Um, isa din sa mga inisyatibo ng NCCTS, tinatarget yung mga kabataan because sa senior senior high po yata may SSG sila, may mga youth formation din. So yun yung magandang i-target dahil meron na din silang established system. They have the power to cascade information and organize projects for their organization. So yun yung nakikita ng NCC na pwede pang gawin. And yes, I agree po yung sinabi ng ni Sir Arniel and Dr. Pusta. Nasa culture din ng, ng Filipino kung paano natin embrace yung buong konsepto ng MIL. Maganda na hindi uh, hindi ka hi, pwede mong ituro ang MIL, pwede mong introduce ang MIL na hindi sa ganung not as blatant as MIL per se, pero pwede mo siyang gawan creatively siguro ng ibang derivative thoughts or ideas para ma-penetrate mo sa MIL sa mga target audience. That's true. No? Thank you very much. In terms of culture, um, Filipinos are generally not confrontational, eh, diba? So, on our own, we fact-check, we double-check our sources, but when we find our relatives or mga elders na, ay, teka, bakit nag-share sila ng fake info? Pero hindi natin sila ma-call out kasi nga, nakatatanda sila eh. Baka pagalitan tayo. So, I don't know. I guess we have to strike a good balance to also to, to know how to call out people, but at the same time, be able to be sensitive to where they're coming from. As Sila Mistina uh, earlier said, iba-iba yung pinagagalingan ng mga tao. So baka naman hindi nila talaga alam or was, wala silang opportunity to learn the things that we're learning, especially the older generation who did not have MIL. So yun nga, striking a balance, that's a very difficult thing to do, but I think kaya naman natin, di ba? Yes, okay. So um, right now, we would like to accept any questions from the audience. Yes, please at, um, approach the mic. Please introduce yourself and from wh where you're from. Good morning, I'm Joseph Sean from Universo. And um, I think I can speak on behalf of the virtual and the in-person audience that we share the that admiration to all our resource persons today. So let me just give um, a few takes um, before I... Um, we can actually see, tama yung mga sinabi, especially what Sir Aniel said about um, MIL, which can be seen in, um, in at least sa mga pinaka basic na or sa mga pinaka basic na Thank you. Okay, yung MIL, nakikita na, yung pag-aaral ng MIL, we can just see as simple with, as simple as, um, sa mga, pwede nating ituro sa bahay at sa mga basic na gawain. So we can actually see these, uh, we can actually see these in some lessons in basic education as a starting point. Ultimo sa writing process in English, uh, the pre-writing uh, pre stage and the drafting stage, yung kakayahan mo to answer guide questions to uh, to revise and edit your your writing output your essay na nakikita na natin nag-essay na tayo nung elementary pa lang nung nag nung tayo na sa junior high school and up until now na mayroon na tayong tinatawag na academic writing and also to add the layer of academic integrity which for me as an educator I see this um this this main concern on academic dishonesty. And uh, marami tayo, marami, kung if you could ask me for screenshots of examples of how academic dishonesty takes place, my goodness, I can give you a Google Drive for that. So, it, ito yung ilan sa mga skills, no? Kasama yung paggawa ng online uh, shopping reviews. So, yung mga reviews, uh, paano ba tayo gumawa ng review? Nakafocus lang ba tayo doon sa 
sa ay ano no ang bait ng delivery ng delivery man ang bait ng rider thank you po and hindi mo pa sinubukan yung item so dawa nag ano tayo eh, nag numili yung focus natin so yun yung mga ila sa mga challenges and uh, with the with forums like this uh, we see na wala wala namang hopelessness yung bang parang sa mga nangyayari ngayon pa, hopeless na, are we feeling that sense of, na parang wala nang pag-asa yung, yung wala nang tayong pag-asa na, mag, na magkaroon pa ng pagbabago but um syempre may mga questions din meron tayong bargaining na hindi ba masyadong late na na, na nag-aaral tayo ng media information literacy so that also contributes to the apprehension of some advocates and stakeholders na maging active at kumaga magkaroon sila ng lakas ng loob to reach out not just to the academic to the academe but also to uh, to the different communities kaya nandoon yung challenge uh, kaya nandoon yung challenges to engage such communities when people have other matters to attend to especially for parents and for those breadwinners who are earning for a living well uh, they could always reason out na wala na silang oras to uh, to para pakinggan yung fact checking na yan kaya maganda rin na i i kubaga yung i consider yung level of understanding nila and at the time also that power is really taken advantage of kaya hindi talaga maiiwasan yung usaping uh, political sa mga ganitong bagay that's why we are very much concerned to to the different stakeholders on how they can um kubaga how we can describe their yung kanilang kapit yung kanilang yung yung kanilang patuloy na uh, lakas ng loob at uh, yung yung determination nila to to make change at makatulong sa uh, sa MIL. So the question here is, all right, um, how, what can we make of the vigor and readiness of stakeholders to sustain those best practices? Anyone want to answer that? Sorry, sorry, I'm sorry. May I repeat? Would you mind to repeat the question? How can the stakeholders? All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um. Sa 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 NCC sa NCC it's a government. Yes, that's right. Kasi mahirap. Mahirap, i, mahirap yung pag-sustain ng mga projects, ng mga activities, ng programs mo. Especially when you're dealing with people na nakikihiram ka ng oras, like for parents and even students, na they are no longer allowed also to participate in, 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 in activities na nasa klase dapat sila. So, what we are trying to do is yung best practices pa rin siguro, we, we are going back to the basic and to the proper proper protocol na we need to partner with um or with an organization na kaya din kaming tulungan doon sa, na kaya naming mag-reconcile ay mag-compromise ng aming terms of reference and then sa situation nila. We, for example, sa, sa, sa parents, Meron na tayong existing na, na mga organizations like the Four Peace na hindi na kailangang gawin ni NCCT at magmakaawa na um, meron tayong meeting sa ganito but hinahanap natin yung ex yung yung existing um, practice na din nila yung existing pattern nila strategy nila like they meet monthly para well kay, uh, aminin man natin o hindi yung yung Four Peace kasi is meron silang monthly allowance, something like that. And NCCT cannot give that, uh, like monetarily um, allowance, we, uh, we cannot give that. So since DSWD can provide that to them, doon na nakiki, nakikisakay si NCCT sa mga program para kapag once they meet uh, sa isang schedule nila, uh, makikipag-meet na din si NCCT doon, makikijoin na din si NCCT. So, uh, we don't need, sabi nga nila, we don't, para 
makabawas din sa sa mga resources ng ng isang organization or implementing organization hanapan mo na play wisely something like that uh, and then for for students naman um, big, hindi na sila pwede sa dere derechong ano we we understand na ang MIL ay hindi mo mapoproseso sa isang araw tatlong araw lima, isang linggo yan Pero si NCCT nagko-consider siya ng, ng, ng ways na, for example, after a month, mag-visit ulit tayo, mag-organize ulit tayo para makita nila, yung, makita nila yung development ng kanilang ginagawa. Mahi, mahirap, especially na nakikita nilang walang direct impact to them. Like what I said na si MIL, hindi mo makikita yung, yung, yung impact niya overnight. So, hindi din nila makikita pa sa, sa, sa buong duration na yun. Um, yun, yun yung pang, pang hook namin ng attention nila. Dapat yung schedule nila is implemented na sa organization nila. Otherwise, kapag kami ang mag-implement ng schedule, sarili naming schedule, hindi, hindi sila mag-agree sa program namin. Ah, hindi nila masasustain yung schedule namin. Yes, dapat um, meron ng embedded na schedule and makikiride on na lang doon. That's how we do in, in NCCT. Thank you, Sir Judy. Anything? Oh, no more. Okay, um, I think we'll have our last question. Uh, <laughs> Sir Arniel, kayo pumili. <laughs> Madami sila eh. <laughs> Madami eh. Ay, teka. After nito, maiksi lang. Kuha tayo na doon sa kabilang side, ha? Kasi unfair. Okay. Pero iksian lang natin. Kasi overtime na tayo. Good morning po sa inyo. Um, quick question lang din. Since um, the development of uh, media and information literacy, so parang kailangan din natin to partner with media organizations as well. So, with that, um, nice kung magbigay ng scenario, what if those media organizations are targeted as, you know, as fake news, for example, in the current media landscape that we have right now. Uh, so, paano po yun? What can you say about the phenomenon? So, paano, paano na, di ba? With that, thank you. I think that's the reason why we have this uh, theme no, for our uh, activity and how to develop that trust. No? Because you have to understand uh, media organizations are being attacked. After the media org organizations, now people in the academy are being attacked. Historians are being attacked. D for them to, you know, uh, propagate their false narrative. And that's the reason why we are here. Because we need to, that's the, another reason why we need to teach people how to uh, verify information, uh, because be, you, we need to uh, also fact check the fact checkers, right? We also need to fact check uh, those information sources. That's why we know they are legitimate. That's why we know they are reliable. But the thing is, this is not something natural. There are people behind who are propagating false information that they are saying that this institution are spreading lies, this and this are spreading lies, they are attacking these media organizations, attacking, you know, historians, diba? We have to be aware, okay? We have to be aware. These are part of the strategies that we are seeing right now. Kaya nga sabi ko sa inyo, the fake news that we know before is not the same fake news that we have right now. Uh, People behind it are, are, I don't know, these are the same people. Maybe nag-iiba lang sila ng, ng affiliation. Uh, strategies are also changing. And definitely, that's one hour of observation. News institutions, uh, people, professionals that are speaking about the truth are being attacked kasi yung truth nila is goes, goes against with the lies that are being spread online. Diba? Kaya nga tinatanong, bakit sila ina -attack? You have to ask that question. Okay? Bakit ina-attack nila yung historian na to? You have to ask that question. 
So you, we have to be very careful. Kaya nga, we need to restore our trust to these legitimate sources of information. Diba? Kaya nga, uh, for them to, su to succeed in, in whatever agenda they have is, one, para kung magdududa tayo sa mga legitimate sources of information, saan na tayo kukuha? Kung pagdududahan natin yung Rappler, pagdududahan natin ang GMA7, pag magdududa, magdududa tayo sa ABS-CBN and other news institution, ang tanong, saan nila tayo gustong kumuha ng information? Di ba? Oh, yun ang tanong. So we have to be aware at the same time, be critical. May, may critical thinking, meron ding critical ignoring. Di ba? Yung mga nagkakalat ng, ng false information, di ignore natin sila. But of course, it doesn't mean na hindi sila i-call out. Okay? It doesn't mean hindi sila i-correct. But again, in terms of getting your sources, kunin nyo siya sa mga legitimate sources of information. Thank you very much for that. I think we have one. Okay, siya, yung naka-blue. Ay, sige. Naka-blue ba yung naka-red? <laughs> Ay, naka-blue. Sige, go. Sige. Very short. Uh, Jack and Poy daw sila. Hindi. <laughs> um, sige. Very short si uh, Sir in blue and then the Sir in red. Very, very short. Sige po. Hello po. Uh, good morning. From Philippine Norman University. And my question is on the curriculum perspective. No? Kasi... I think Dr. Pusta would agree with me na ang curriculum guides natin sa K-12 ay lumana. Okay. So I would like to ask po no na, is there an opportunity for MIL to be taught in Filipino or in a mother tongue-based multilingual education uh, instruction? And if i-overhaul natin yung K-12, what competencies in the current MIL curriculum would need to stay and what would need to be improved? Thank you, Paul. Wow, that's a, that's a very challenging question, but um, yes, I do concur with you that the curriculum is outdated. I sounded this off to Yusek Mateo. He just retired, just like me. Uh, a, a batchmate from UP, that the problem with DepEd is that they do not involve the different stakeholders in the planning of the curriculum. They just simply get academicians more on the cognitive. And I said, Jan kayo hindi balanceado eh. Uh, sabi niya, e, ikaw kasi dami dami mong commitment. Sabi ko na, mag-consultant ka na rin sa DepEd. Sabi ko, nasa CHED na ako. Ayaan mo ako sa CHED kasi I'm at the college level. What I'm trying to say is, when I say involve the different stakeholders, get a uh, public organization like NCCT to sit down in a, Chet does this, eh, uh, before you offer a particular curriculum, consultation meetings muna. Ano ba yung issues, ano ba yung experiences on the ground? Invite PAMIL, invite PACE, invite PACMRI as a research organization who does research. Kasi one thing that is lacking from our end is we do not have the empirical data of a longitudinal research. Meaning to say, wala kasi tayong uh, uh, shout out to all uh, high school faculty colleagues, please, <laughs> if you can collaborate. Uh, Let's, let's do a longitudinal study. Anim na taon na po si MIL, pero hindi po siya documented kasi wala pong gumagawa ng research. Ano ba yung naging issues, concerns, paano sinagot, paano nag-respond over the years para bago mag-curriculum revision, may empirical data ka na, meron ka pang consultation meetings with different stakeholders. Um, as regards to specific competencies, I think Sir Arnel will be in the best position to comment on that. <laughs> uh, this is my, uh, my take on that question. Uh, to my dear colleagues who are teaching MIL, while we are still waiting for the curriculum revision, this is what we can do. We have to understand that the curriculum 
is the minimum requirements. The curriculum is the minimum requirements. Meaning to say, as a teacher, you can enhance your institutional uh, curriculum, if you call that an institutional curriculum, or enhance your syllabus, wherein you go beyond what is stated in the curriculum guide. For instance, uh, the issue on disinformation is not mentioned in the curriculum guide. So what are we going to do? We're not going to teach that because that's, it's not in the curriculum guide? Of course not. Enhance your own curriculum. Uh, again, I'm not saying we create a new list because we are competency-based. Competency so whatever is in the curriculum, we implement, but we go beyond. Okay? So you can enhance your own curriculum and have uh, there uh, a topic on this information because we need to discuss those things. Uh, if I remember, if I know correctly, the curriculum kasi was created in 2013. If I will base that on the footnote, December of 2013. So from 2013 up to now, marami nang, nagna, marami nang nangyari, marami nang nagbago. So ang, ang challenge ko sa mga educators, again, to teach beyond the curriculum because that is a minimum requirements. Uulitin ko ha, hindi ko sinasabing palitan natin yung competencies. Huwag nating palitan kasi that is a national standard. As a national standard, kailangan natin siyang i-implement. But what we can do is enhance to teach beyond the standards. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sir Arniel. Um, totally agree with that. Okay, last question po. Si Sir na nakared. Nagpromise ako eh. <laughs> we'll just keep it short before I wrap up this talk. Uh, hello, my test. <laughs> uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate yung organizers uh, sa pagbuo nitong MIL. So most of uh, the colleges ay marami natutunan sa inyo. And I'm Joel Fernandez. Uh, as a formerly a broadcaster doc sa DWBL. As of now, no? Every Friday po yung aking ano. Then also, as good anang UP taking up a uh, broadcom radio communication. Yung question ko po, <laughs> simple yan, wala ko ah. Yung question ko po, uh, um, um, kasi most of uh, the the media kasi ngayon, in reality, is a very dangerous job. So yung mga student dito, <laughs> i-decide kung talagang gusto niyo magtuloy. I'm not, ano, hindi naman kayo tinatawa, pero kung yan ang pupurso nyo, dahil meron kayong gustong gawin, at may purpose yan, gawin nyo. Uh, katuloy yung tinuturo sa atin ng, ano, ng family, itong mail na to, na kailangan ilagay natin yung fact checks. Sabihin natin yung totoo. Uh, minsan mahirap. Dahil nakataya yung buhay natin. Ang problema lang po dito, meron tayong cyber crime Ano ba yung libel? One of the, the, the law, control tayo eh. No, we cannot speak. Uh, katuloy nga sinabi ni Jim Morrison, whoever controls the media, controls the mind. So mahirap ma'am, no? Uh, yung question ko lang po, ano po yung, kasi marami po tayong mga issue ngayon eh. Yung news report is not totally uh, in reality, may ang gimagawa na ano, not, not I'm speaking naman lahat ng ano, no. But, there's some, uh, some, some agency and some ano rin, they control. Ano po? Pero siyempre kapatid natin sila sa hanap buhay, and then we, we respect naman yan. And then sa the cases of our, my brother, uh, Percy Lapid, you know, na, na, namatay po siya. Uh, masyado nang nililigaw ang ano, statement natin. And then one thing, uh, sa MIL, ano po yung pwede niyong uh, maibigay pa, para ma, magkaroon pa ng uh, kaalaman ang mga estudyante? At yung, uh, yung, yung gusong parating sa amin, dito sa mga dito, na sila, ay ma-apply pong maigi sila, sa kanila. Yun lang po. 
Thank you po. Would anyone want to answer that? Just one person answer that. While it is true that the issues now are very different, I concur that um, <coughs> the eminent dangers, uh, we call that occupational risk of being media practitioner abounds. And it's been a perennial problem in a democracy. Uh, <coughs> I think it cannot be resolved at our level. Uh, while, while some groups are already moving towards uh, constitutional reforms, what we can uh, probably continue to do is to be vigilant as, uh, because not only are we audiences, as Arnel had pointed out earlier, we are also producers, content producers, not only of messages, of videos, and everything on different social media platforms. And that's where the challenge uh, is, is posed on you right now. How media literate are you in your practices in social media? So reflect on this. Because that way, ma mas makakatulong tayo. Um, how near are we to the truth every time we seek it? Is it truth well told? Or is it the, the truth that we want to believe in? Because there are individual truths that we have, and there are world truths, you know, somehow. Uh, so those are just the things to ponder about, reflect on it. He said the, the way to do things better is always to, yes, make an assessment, but more importantly, reflect. Reflect on the consequences. Reflect on its impact on you. Reflect on its impact on other people. And only then, collectively, as a group, we can make a shout out to government. We can make a shout out to our um, leaders in Senate and in Congress. Pagtuunan yun naman ng pansin ito, kasi mahalaga ito sa amin. Pagtuunan yun naman ng pansin ang buhay ng mga media personnel, kasi kung wala sila, wala ring magpapalaganap ng balita, wala ring maglalabas ng katotohanan. Yun lamang po. And as tagline nga ng GMA, di ba, katotohanan ang magpapalaya sa bayan. Kung wala tayong katotohanan, mananalit, mananatili tayong, um, how do I put that? <laughs> Nawala na ako ng Tagalog, eh, no? If there is no truth, um, mananatili tayong nasasakal, okay? At, at um, captured and imprisoned na bibilanggo sa kung ano man yung kinasad, kinasasadlakan natin. So as the great good book of, of Ephesians says, okay, let me quote this Bible verse. Ephesians 4.25 says, Stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth, for we are all parts of the same body. So kung ano man na nangyari sa isang tao, apektado lahat. If we tell lies, then the lies, the impact of the lies, would um, affect other people. Uh, but if we tell the truth, the impact of the truth that we say will also impact others because we live in one world, right? And um, it is worthy to note that we are holding this MIL forum on today, October 24, which is United Nations Day for those who do not remember. And Mr. Antonio Guterres, the U United Nations Secretary General, said that in the end, it comes down to values. We want the world, our children, to inher inherit to be defined by the values enshrined in the UN Charter. Peace, justice, respect, human rights, tolerance, and solidarity. And we will only be able to have these values if we ourselves have these values. Because if we have these values, then the people we elect, the people we vote into power, will also reflect these values. And in turn, these people will develop policies, will develop rules, and, and will develop um, all these regulations that will have a good impact and will be will result in the betterment of this not only of this country but of this world because we're all citizens of the world and i hope that with this forum um and and everything that we've discussed right now hindi lang mapupunta sa ano it, it's not just all head knowledge but we really put it into action we really apply these things that we've learned and with that thank you very much everyone for attending thank you very much dr pusta sir arniel and sir judy for answering all our questions at sa lahat okay Katotohanan, more than anything. Thank you very much.
another round of applause for our speakers from session two. So at this juncture, I'd like to call on all of the resource speakers from the keynote address of Mr. Marlon Julia Nombrado. We call onto the stage Dean Rowena Capulong Reyes, members of the panel session number one, Paolo Ordoño, Tina Lopez in Sambagayas for a photo opportunity as I wrap up this session for everyone. So again, we call onto the stage all of our resource speakers. We call on Dean Wen. So we'd like to thank everyone for your active participation and those joining us in Facebook Live. Thank you for staying with us, keeping in tune. We are still live in the Facebook pages of the following, the Far Eastern University, the National Council for Children's Television, the Philippine Association for Media and Information Literacy, and Rappler. So once again, on behalf of the Far Eastern University and our FEU Mila program, I am Trixie, the manager of this program. So maraming salamat. This is the kick-off event. Day one pa lamang po ito ng Global MIL Week celebrated here in the Philippines. And dahil sobrang naramdaman namin ang interest ninyo, our in-person audience and our virtual audience, meron din po tayong mga ibang activities that you can also join. So, to our educators in the audience, we have the hashtag Global MIL Week PH Raffle Draw for MIL educators. There will be 10 winners who will receive a gift package containing Real Me Wireless Buds, a wireless label maker, an insulated cup, out-of-the-box handbook, shirt, and a bunch of other Global MIL Week freebies. So, feel free to send your entries until Thursday. The raffle draw will be next week. Oh, sorry. Will be this week, Friday, October 28th. Sir, may we have the details of the Okay, so again, we are discussing what you can do um, throughout the Global MIL Week. So muli sa ating mga educators, we have the hashtag Global MIL Week PH Raffle Draw. Okay, sa ating mga high school and college students naman, we also have something for you. We have the Nationwide MIL Contest. For high school and college students. Okay? The objective is to engage media savvy young Filipinos in media and information literacy, high school and college students. You are encouraged to create a 90 second video clip that answers pressing questions about trust and disinformation. Our winners can receive up to eight thousand pesos in cash prize. Wow, palakpaka naman dyan, di ba? Our first category will be for the high school students and the second category, a separate one for the college students. So, full mechanics can be accessed sa ating link bit.ly slash milweekph So, yun lang po ang ating tatandaan. Meron tayong um, competitions, a raffle draw for our MIL educators here in the audience in those who are watching us via Facebook. And also, we, we also have an MIL contest for our high school and college students. So we also would like to promote um, a couple of other activities of our partner organizations. They have a Media Civics Lab, the fact-checking academy from Break the Fake Movement. Uh, the call for applications is until tomorrow, October 25, and the kickoff event is on October 29 via Zoom. We also have the MIL webiserie, the 2002 Usapang Pamilya, Webisode 5. And before I officially close the program, I would like to acknowledge all of our co-presenters for the Global MIL Week 
of course, the Far Eastern University Department of Education, the Out of the Box Media Literacy Initiative, the Philippine Association for Media and Literacy, Break the Fake Movement, National Council for Children's Television, Yabong Philippines, Vera Files, Move PH, Foundation for Media Alternatives, the Asian Institute for Journalism and Communication, Campus Journalism Lab, Young Communicator Circle, Mariano Marcos State University, the Xavier University Development Communication Department, and the Department of Communication, University of the Philippines, Baguio. And maraming salamat po ulit. This has been Trixie, the manager of FEU Media and Information Literacy Program. Thanking everyone. Maraming salamat po and happy Global MIL Week.